I, I think we, we, we can start now. A warm welcome to our uh, second session of our Israeli-German business dialogue about lightweighting design, technology and today materials. Today we are going to talk about uh, composites, new materials and additive manufacturing. We are happy to uh, have uh, six German companies that in the second part of our presentation event will um, do a short pitch about their special specialties, products and solutions. And um, we are in the second part of uh, a one week project that is um, an export promotion project on behalf of the German Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy about, um, well, lightweighting design. We are going to introduce 12 companies, 12 German companies to the Israeli markets. Yesterday we had um, a very interesting discussion and presentations about um, production technologies, production and testing technologies. We are introducing that. That means Shula Wolfs from the Israeli-German Chamber of Industry and Commerce together with her team, Eva and Spea. Um, from the one side and from the other side, that's um, my company, SPA Systems for Business Solutions. We are working together since um, now seven years on behalf of the German Ministry of Economic Affairs doing these export promotion projects. Normally, we would be in Tel Aviv right now. Now we are all together somewhere and finding together here on Zoom. I am glad that we have here today Werner Lohscheider again. He is the responsible and the head of the uh, division construction industry, lightweight construction, new materials and resource efficiency in the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy. He will give us a short introduction um, about uh, lightweight in Germany. And then we will hear two speakers from associations from the uh, Association of Reinforced Plastics Industry in Germany, the managing director, Dr. Elmar Witten, and um, Dr. Naum Nave, from the Israel Plastics and Rubber Center. Even in these short presentations, we would um, stress the headline we have here in our event that is business dialogue. So you are free, everyone here in the audience to ask questions from the beginning on. And um, that is now for the introduction, for the first speeches, and then even for the company presentations. Shula, some remarks about uh, what we are going, um, how, how it will be handled and what we are going to do after the pitches. Yes, uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, first of all, I'm very glad to see so many people here now already so early in the morning, you're so punctual, that's great. <clears throat> Thank you, Naum, for uh, joining us. Naum is not only not only Israel Plastics and Rubber Center, but he's also a senior faculty member of uh, Polymer Materials Engineering at Schenkar. And uh, Schenkar is uh, one of uh, the colleges uh, that are very much involved in composite materials and polymers. And um, this is, uh, I think, I think um, something that is interesting to mention in light of what we had yesterday, um, I want you to talk about this also that uh, yesterday Oren Harambam uh, talked about this and there was a discussion yesterday that the fact that uh, polymers uh, and composite materials are not very structured in Israel, not very organized. There is not uh, such something like an in industrial initiative to promote this also, although it's a really important um, technology. Um, but we will probably talk about this uh, later. Uh, the technical things, you can please, please stay uh, mute so that we don't have to mute you. 
uh, you can leave your pictures on so that we can see you as long as it works, as long as we don't have uh, technical problems um, with the broad width or so, which is uh, nicer than when we can see the people. You are free to ask um, if we see that it's going too much and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot handle it like this. We would like you, you can also use the chat option. That means you write into the chat to everyone that uh, you have a question and uh, someone of us will pick it up and uh, will address the question accordingly. Um, it would be nice if you could raise your hand if you want to ask a question that uh, so that we can see it. Uh, you're free to have uh, reactions also. I will put uh, my mail address into the chat uh, now, so you can address me if you are interested in uh, B2B meetings with uh, the companies, because uh, this is what it's about. We want uh, the companies to meet uh, potential uh, business partners, to meet the Israeli, to meet uh, the Israeli, um, yeah, mm -hmm. Industry representatives. Industry are uh, people that are interested and into the field uh, to have a dialogue here. So uh, then please address me, come to me. I will uh, see to it that it will be organized in some way or another. Anything else I've forgotten? Would you you can download the delegation brochure from the link you can see in the chat right now, the first link, and you should use this moment because otherwise there will be a lot of questions before and you won't find it anymore. So click on this link, you see a, a program of today and uh, more important, you see the short company profiles from all of our 12 German companies, very interesting with the contact details too. So you get a rough overview what they are doing, what they are looking for, and you can short in, 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 in some, some minutes, you can listen to their pitches. So Shula, I think we have um, the organizational things and now we can start. That is um, great to have you here, Werner, again, Werner Loschader from the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and uh, Energy. We are looking forward to get uh, some ideas about the organization of lightweighting um, with crossover technology, lightweighting solutions, how it is organized in Germany. The stage is yours. Okay, good morning. I hope you can hear and see me and I'm going to share my presentation now with you to so give me some more seconds, please. I hope I can manage it. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Here so, we go. Uh, my name is Werner Losch and I'm the head of the division for light rating, uh, new materials for source efficiency and construction within the Ministry for Economic Affairs and um, Energy here in Berlin. And as well, warm welcome from my side. Uh, it's a nice day, not too cold in Berlin. So. Uh, perfect conditions and uh, for those of you who um, participated yesterday already in the meeting, uh, one important information, my talk is uh, more or less the same as it uh, was yesterday, so um, it's your decision <laughs> to listen again or not. So, um, light waiting um, and our light waiting initiative, which is my talk about, um, is uh, is an important um, uh, technology. It is a game changer technology. Um, and of course, uh, the overriding um, global trend and challenge is Corona, the Corona pandemic in these uh, Corona days, but um, climate protection as one of, uh, as another um, global trend is important for us. And we have to tackle that uh, challenge as well. And uh, in those regards, light weighting is important, is an enabler, a driver of innovation. And so uh, together with resource efficiency, it is key for us. At the same time, light weighting is a cross-cutting technology consisting of different technologies, uh, 
different industries, different materials, different manufacturing processes, and you can find um, then here at that uh, slide uh, in form of that bionic structure and form of that honeycomb structure and bringing those players, those stakeholders together is not a self-fulfilling uh, story. It is work that has to be done. And we have done that in the last years within our ministry. And we have established um, our light rating initiative, which is uh, mainly about uh, networking and funding in, the, in that cross-cutting technology. And um, because uh, Shula has mentioned it in her introduction, um, I want to, to pick up that point. Um, my experience is it might be the same uh, challenge for you in Israel to bring together the different stakeholders, to organize them, to structure that cross-cutting technology because uh, I guess it's the same in Israel. You are a strong industry, but um, not everybody knows about each other. And so bringing that together, building up and, and building up common ground that is a work that has to be done and you see it at that slide it is quite an, a broad structure a structure we have built up in the last four or five years but we do need these different elements to bring the stakeholders together and uh, i'm going to talk about the red colored uh, elements of that initiative in the next minutes so the first one um, is uh, the strategy group, and that underlines uh, my, my thesis. It is a broad and complex structure consisting of the representatives of the lender light rating organization. And that was, uh, this was, uh, Thomas was talking about it uh, a few minutes ago uh, as well. Um, um, in Germany, we have 16 lenders, so we have 16 representatives um, and they bring in a lot of information and knowledge experience and so we can link the federal and the state level. On the, on the right side, you find the representatives of the different uh, industries and um, union and association and here we are, um, uh, we have the opportunity to bring together the different materials that it's very important for you and uh, building up a multi-material light rating. And that part is consisting of, uh, for example, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, glass fiber, fiber reinforced plastic, aluminum, steel, magnesium, wood, and a lot of more different players. And so you see how broad and complex that is. And typical for cross-cutting technology. And uh, the most important thing is that that structure, that body works very well. And so it is a very strong um, base for our work. And maybe uh, it is a blueprint as well for you and for your work uh, in Israel. I don't know, you have to check that. So the next element of the initiative is the light rating atlas and that uh, digital tool is currently used by more or less 700 companies and organizations mainly from Germany but more and more are coming from European member states and even some uh, are from abroad and uh, they have here the opportunity uh, to represent their light rating skills and to find new business partners and new business partners could find uh, you. And so, uh, because it is available in English, it might be an, an interesting opportunity as well for you, uh, for, the, for Israel, to have a look at that digital tool. And maybe you find uh, new business partners and uh, that would be good for you. And that would make that international net, net even stronger. So we are very much interested here in an exchange uh, and in a kind of cooperation with you. Another strong pillar of our initiative is a light rating strategy. And we have named it uh, from the economy for the economy uh, because uh, with that a bottom up process, we have involved 350 um, experts from business and from research in three um, very successful workshops and a final conference. And um, 
here we have got a lot of input of um, actually about 600 impulses and incentives, ideas, and very specific uh, actions as well, 42. And um, that is put together, and that's just, can you can see here at the right side, in a paper of key issues from business and research. And uh, that paper is the base for our work within the ministry to, uh, and we have uh, written on that base our light rating strategy and hopefully we will uh, publish that um, strategy at the end of the year. Yes, let me add this. From my point of view, that process, that bottom-up process is a win-win situation uh, for, for uh, research and business because they have got the unique opportunity to shape their own light rating framework and we have got the required information for our strategy. So that's great. A milestone, uh, at least from my point of view, is the technology transfer program for light rating because it's, it is the first time that we have an, an, a program, a funding program only made for light rating on a very strong financial base. And here you can the different goals of that uh, funding program. I don't want to read that all. Uh, the most important one is the typical one for a transfer program because it is to support the cross industry and cross material knowledge and technology transfer. So how do we achieve our goals? Um, we have set up uh, five funding lines to support that and you can read it by yourself here. Uh, the important thing to know is that the money for that funding program and for, that, uh, for the funding lines uh, come from two different sources. The first source is uh, not very surprisingly the budget of our ministry, but uh, the lion's share of the money comes from the second financial sources, which is um, the climate fund of the government. And that money uh, goes into the funding lines two and three, and they are about CO2 savings, uh, they are about climate protection and resource efficiency. And here you can see how important climate protection is uh, for, for light rating uh, generally and specifically how important that is for light rating and that funding program. And so uh, climate protection is a driver as well for light rating. And to uh, conclude that, that point, um, that program has started at the beginning of this year very, very successfully. And so we are happy to, to have set up that funding program. A last uh, point is um, on internationalization. And uh, here are two, two in events important from my perspective, um, which you can see here. We have um, initiated and organized a meeting two weeks ago, the first meeting of the European Light Rating Network under the German e EU Council Presidency. And the idea behind that was to bring again together the different player on European level of business research, European Commission, and of the ministries in the different member states and as well building uh, up here um, net in the field of light reading. That is uh, key as well on European level. The next event is a um, political highlight, the second light rating summit um, at the Hannover Fair on the 13th of April next year. The political highlight because we have high, um, high level speaker. One of them is our minister Peter Altmaier and we have a, a, the Swedish minister with us, uh, high level speakers from Netherlands, Austria. And so that's a meeting you shouldn't miss. And it's again about European networking. So you can see that how important uh, that networking is for, for Germany. And I guess it's the same uh, uh, for you in Israel. The last point is um, the point uh, which bring, uh, brings us together today and yesterday and all the days uh, here. It is about the foreign market entry program. You know that uh, program more or less. 
So um, it is for us in the field of light reading an important instrument to cooperate with, uh, with uh, companies uh, in foreign countries and we do have more uh, meetings like today we, we had them with US and with China and we will have them next year with Netherlands, Japan and Nigeria. So that uh, market entry program is very important for us and I, I'm open for more of an involvement uh, of more involvement between Germany and Israel. So uh, if you are interested, please give me a hint to go on with our cooperation. So let me sum it up. Light rating is a game changer technology and it is key for strengthening and modernizing our industrial sector here in Germany on a sustainable um, level. And to illustrate that, let me use the light rating principle that stands for less weight, less energy, lower emissions, greater functionalities and better resource efficiency. And of course, there are the challenges we have to tackle. And the first one is, from my perspective, establishing fully digitized and linked value chains. And uh, we do need as well the necessary um, yeah, skills and knowledge in, on every level to handle that. Secondly, we do need reducing costs, reducing costs, reducing costs, especially in the automotive sector, but in many other sectors as well. And thirdly, we have to set up suitability for mass, mass production and last but not least, uh, with regard to uh, ecological uh, and climate uh, points, we have to set up sophisticated recycling processes, especially regarding multi-material light weighting. Um, and if we do so, and I'm, I think we can and we will do so, light weighting is a win-win-win technology for jobs, climate and companies. And so that's it from my side. If you have more questions concerning the technology trends program for light rating or the light rating initiative, please uh, get into contact with my colleagues and you find the contacts here on that side. And yes, thank you for your attention and thank you for having me. And I'm very interested in your cooperation and questions and your remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Werner. It's uh, always a pleasure to, to see how much uh, the the government, how much you have done in the last years to 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 put up a, a, such a strategical approach to um, to strengthen a, a technology, a crossover technology that is very important, very um, directed versus a future uh, with a lot of benefits for for. Um, resources efficiency environment and other other aspects so um, we will concentrate on two aspects right now this is uh, the material side and uh, in germany and in in israel what there is uh, uh, the trends and what is is going on and then after that we will have a, a short discussion and um, maybe if there are any questions to, to your side uh, from our audience, uh, it's welcome to to put you in the in the discussion with our two speakers, Elmar Witten and Naum Nave. So thank you very much again, Werner. And now I would um, like to pass the word to Dr. Elmar Witten, the managing director from the Association of Reinforced Plastics Industry. Please, Elma. Yeah, Thomas, thank you very much. Uh, can you see my presentation now? We see your screen and the presentation. Perfect. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And thank you very much, Werner Lohscheider, <coughs> for the introduction of the uh, Lightweight Initiative, which is, I think, in Europe very unique. And we as AVK are, of course, actively supporting this initiative. And with our material reinforced plastics or composites, we are part of the lightweight industry. And for our material, uh, lightweight is always a market driver. And 
The headline of today is new materials, composites and additive manufacturing. And I have to tell you composites are not a new material. Uh, some of you might think it's a new material because it was very highlighted in the last years with carbon fiber applications for high end uh, applications. But um, our association, the AVK, I, uh, is the oldest association in the plastics industry, I think. In four years, we are 100 years old, um, as long as this kind of material exists. And I would like to focus today in my very short presentation on one kind of material on glass fiber reinforced plastics. As Werner already said, there are uh, different kinds of composites materials. Um, you might have heard a lot of carbon fiber applications, as I said. That's, of course, a very interesting uh, kind of composites material because it's used for the automotive industry, for uh, aerospace industry, and so on. But if we have a look at the market, the carbon fiber production or the production of carbon fiber reinforced plastics is in terms of volume only 1% of the composites material. I don't see your, we, I, I see only the first page of your presentation. I'm still at the first page. That okay, <laughs> because uh, in my mind. I, <laughs> I go very briefly to, to the other slides. That's all right. That's uh, still my introduction. <laughs> but 95% uh, of the market of composites, so of reinforced plastics material is glass fiber reinforced. And we do this survey on the market, not only on the German market, but on the European market since decades. And I show you here the last figure I presented the first time two weeks ago. That is the production of glass fiber reinforced plastics in Europe. And with glass fiber reinforced plastics, we mean all kinds of material which has a thermoset basic. So the plastic is thermoset. And we include from the thermoplastic material all kinds of long fiber thermoplastics, so not the short fiber reinforced thermoplastics. So just to give you an overview, the production is uh, nearly 1 million tons in Europe, glass fiber reinforced plastics. And the production of the whole composites or the, or the whole composites production worldwide containing all kinds of composites material is around 10 to 12 million tons. So Europe is around one third of the production volume because composites is not only the glass fiber reinforced plastics, which I'll show you here. It's also carbon fiber, it's natural fiber composites, and it is short fiber reinforced thermoplastics, which are not included here. So you see that in 2020, we will have a decrease in the market of around 12% in Europe. So we're coming from 1.1 million tons and we are now uh, down to not, uh, not 1 million tons, 996,000 tons. But you have to have a closer look at the markets because this is very general for Europe. You have to have a closer look at the different countries because that differs from country to country. And you have a closer look at the different applications is the material used for the transport sector, for the construction sector, for the electroelectronic sector, and so on. And you, of course, have to have a closer look at the different kinds of materials. We have materials which are uh, for non-automotive uh, uh, processes like uh, hand layup and spray up. You have uh, material classes for very automotive uh, processes like SMC, BMC, or pollution. So this number doesn't say very much. You have to have a closer look at the market. But what is not surprising is that the development of the glass fiber reinforced production is similar to the production of the real GDP, so the gross domestic product in the European countries, and to the industrial production in the countries. You see here the figures the green figure is the production of glass fiber reinforced plastics and the other figures are the industrial production and the real GDP production. And it's not surprising because the main application areas for our materials are the transport and the construction sector. So you see here uh, the market for the applications of glass fiber reinforced plastics, 
We have around 37% of the material is used for the construction and infrastructure sector, and 32% is used for the transport sector, and then another 15% is used for the sports and leisure sector, and another 15% uh, for the electro and electronic sector. And this is similar since many years, the division of the market, because it's a very heterogeneous market. You know, in Germany, we have uh, circa 2,000 companies producing composites parts. And we, in our association, we have around, we have 230 member companies in the AVK. Nearly half of them, a little more than 100 companies, are companies producing parts made of uh, reinforced plastics. And these 100 companies are producing more than 95% of the volume in Germany of glass fiber reinforced plastics. So, uh, 100 companies are producing 95% of the volume of 2,000 companies in total. And this is similar to all European countries. So the market is very heterogeneous and we still have many small and very small companies in this sector. And the last figure I would like to show you is a little more detailed uh, concerning the different processing technologies with which parts of uh, GRP are made of. You see here the blue line around 25%. So uh, nearly one fourth of the market is the so-called SMC and BMC material. That's uh, sheet mold compound and bulk mold compound. So um, uh, it's used for processing technologies uh, like injection molding and pressing technologies since the 1960s for serial applications. So we use this material since the 1960s for making parts, um, more than 100,000 parts each. So it's not a new material for serial applications, the glass fiber reinforced plastics. And you see that this part of the market, the SMC BMC market is very stable since the last 20 years. And you see this red dotted line, the open mold techniques these are the hand layup and spray up techniques. So the very small companies are working with non-automotive processes. And this uh, was decreasing from nearly 40% uh, 20 years ago to meanwhile 20%. And you see one material class, which is increasing more than all the others. This is the orange line. This is the thermoplastic material we include in our figures. That's the LFT and the GMT uh, um, uh, market. So the long fiber reinforced thermoplastics and the glass mud <coughs> thermoplastics. And that is not at least due to the uh, applications in the automotive sector, uh, that this kind of material is growing uh, much more than all the other materials. And I would like to end my presentation now because I think, Thomas, uh, I used this 10 minutes and there should be some minutes for questions, uh, if there are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elmar. Um, yeah, the, the, we, we will have time for questions, um, but I think it's, uh, it's fine if we hear the, listen to the, the uh, Israeli part before. Yes, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Naum Nave. As I said before, in the beginning, uh, he's from the Israel Plastics and Rubber Center, but uh, he's also, or this, at the same time, senior faculty member of the Polymer Materials Engineering at the Shankar College of Engineering, Design and Art. Um, he asked me to bring his students over, which I'm very fond of uh, that he did so, because I find it really, really important um, Naum Nave is an expert in polymeric materials and technologies and um, he comes from the uh, Technion, he studied at the Technion, he had a sabbatical in Toronto I think, he um, is a very very good example of the close cooperation between uh, university industry and um, the defense industry also, because he has worked at the Raphael for a long time, which is very typical. 
I think. And um, I think, uh, Naum, it would be really interesting if um, it would be really interesting to know if uh, we have something that could be similar to that. Are we using uh, glass reinforced uh, plastics in the same amount as uh, do, the, do we produce it in the same ways? Are the applications the same? I think it, is, it looks very different for Israel, but um, you do the talk, please. <laughs> okay, all right. So thank you very much for your introduction. Let me just share my screen for a moment. And then, okay, uh, we can get started. So uh, it's a real pl pl uh, pleasure to have you here. I understand some of you are in Germany, but to me, it feels that we're hosting you. So it's nice to have you here. <laughs> um, I try to give credit to all parties uh, that made this uh, dialogue possible here in this slide. and. If I missed uh, any, uh, so sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give a so short introduction of myself and Shankar IPRC. And then I will show you a little bit of the composite materials and technologies that are uh, frequently seen in Israel. And I will end up with uh, activities that are uh, ongoing at Shankar and IPRC with uh, uh, a stress on uh, preprex for AFP and uh, 3D printing. So um, myself, I am staff at the Department of Polymer Materials Engineering in Shankar, which is uh, a college uh, that was established. I mean, the, this department was established 20 years ago. It's actually the only institute in Israel to grant uh, degrees in polymer engineering. And uh, we have this uh, model that some say it's uh, taken from the Fraunhofer model, where there is the uh, uh, academic side of the story, which uh, trains students and uh, engineers then to join the industry. And on the other hand, um, we are also a research institute, which does applied uh, uh, research uh, in close relationship uh, with the Israeli industry. Uh, we are located for the uh, research institute in both Shankar and Technion. And you see now the uh, uh, strong linkage between our uh, uh, pre industrial related activities and the academic arena. So I will just uh, go through the labs to show you a little bit of what we have. So, uh, you know, composites, it's not only about uh, continuous fiber reinforced composites, we have also many companies in Israel doing uh, thermoplastics by injection molding and extrusion and some other processes. So uh, we have uh, lab scale uh, units uh, in Shankar and IPRC to uh, run uh, pilot uh, uh, processes. Uh, we have uh, recently purchased a very special unit to do multiplication of layers in a co-extrusion uh, line. So basically, as you can see in this uh, diagram here, we're able to make films or, or sheet with hundreds and even thousands of layers. And this brings us, uh, I would say easily, uh, down to a micro to nano thick layers. I mean, uh, depending on the number of layers that you can introduce with these uh, multiplication units that we can uh, uh, set up in series, we can uh, do nanotechnology uh, in a continuous way. Uh, we have also characterization facilities, and I'm just showing you a few of them, okay, just to get an idea of how this uh, place looks like, and I hope next time you can be here and, and see it by, by yourself. Our, our graduates um, uh, reach almost every company in the, uh, in, in the country that does polymers, and it's, uh, you know, from uh, injection molding and extrusion, as I said, for the thermoplastics, all the way to classical composites, uh, the big uh, defense companies, and so on. Uh, now, um, this slide uh, looks at the composite industry, but just the uh, classical composites, okay? So continuous fiber reinforced. And yes, here in Israel also, the large volume is uh, usually seen with the glass fibers, okay? So we have the large producers, large in terms of sales, not necessarily in terms of uh, 
capacity of uh, composite uh, production. Okay, so it's mostly the different companies and some of them are, I think, worldwide known and their subsidiaries. And there is some uh, uh, small and to medium enterprises. I, I just wrote some of them, there's some more. Uh, okay, and, and there's lots of startups that are doing composites in any possible way. And of course, the material suppliers, which are also important in the uh, value chain. For the technologies that these companies are using to produce their parts, it starts from a wet layup and uh, pultrusion. I would call them like uh, the lower end or uh, uh, like a more low, kind of low tech uh, technologies through filament winding and autoclave curing up to RTM, vacuum RTM, resin infusion. And uh, recently we're looking at uh, these technologies and I will show you that this is um, the way this industry is moving now from the uh, traditional uh, methods, which uh, involve a lot of uh, uh, labor into some uh, processes that uh, uh, include automation like uh, automated fiber placement and 3D printing. And this is the way this industry is looking at uh, innovation. Um, let me just give you one example of how this is happening in Israel. Now, Israel is uh, a major, major exporter of unmanned aerial vehicles, what we call UAVs. Okay, several companies are exporting, uh, you know, Elbit and uh, some others. Elbit is uh, maybe the largest one. Um, traditionally, uh, these uh, UAVs are made by uh, just, you know, the processes that are shown here, hand layup and uh, autoclave curing. And since, uh, as I said, uh, these processes are uh, cost consuming and uh, they demand a lot of labor, we're trying to see how to move from this uh, uh, map of uh, technologies into something that would give us a better control of properties, lower cost. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in a way similar to, uh, I think the last slide that was uh, shown this morning, this first presentation, I remember slide number 11, about the benefits of uh, doing something innovative. Okay, mm -hmm. reducing costs, introducing innovation, uh, reducing the CO2 emissions, and hopefully also recycling, something we have just started thinking of. So just as a little uh, scientific background, my uh, presentation gets a little bit uh, technical and it has to be technical as you already know, there's I think 15 students of mine listening to me. So I have to be careful. Uh, we're trying to go from solution impregnation of uh, prepregs or composites and also, you know, uh, uh, traditional preprints contain a uh, small quantity of solvents going from there to hot melt impregnation. That means that we're trying to get rid of the solvents and then reduce all the emissions uh, and, and improve our uh, uh, productivity in the lines. So this is uh, one of the major things that is going on in Israel, automated fiber placement. As far as I know, there are three machines uh, in Israel doing AFP at uh, different stages of stages of uh, development. Okay, basically for those of you who do not know what AFP means, it's uh, a robotic uh, process that allows to apply the preprex uh, in a controlled way while the material itself has a very good control over uh, volume, uh, fiber volume fraction and void content. So uh, this is the kind of things that uh, companies in Israel are looking at now. Okay, for instance, this would be a part for the F-35. There's two companies in Israel doing parts for uh, the F-35 platform. Uh, ourselves in Shenkar IPRC were involved uh, in, in this uh, trend and for the sake of uh, improving the uh, knowledge and technology of uh, uh, automation in Israel, we have uh, a machine that looks like this. This is a picture taken at my lab. It's a prepregging machine, automated, totally automated, to produce prepregs for the AFP uh, process. Okay, now uh, in order to get going with this project, we have also developed uh, prepregs of our own and we have developed the resins. I will show you a little bit of properties that we can get 
this is a, a toe prepreg being done in my lab. Okay, and, and this would be a tape prepreg. We can go up to four inches wide. Okay, just a brief uh, view of what we can do uh, at Chenkar IPRC. Now, as I said, we develop our own resins. So you can see here, for instance, for the viscosity that is required on one hand to uh, allow uh, good impregnation at the uh, processing temperatures, on the other hand, to uh, have a good tack and allow drip drippability. So we have chosen our uh, compositions and I can show you here that our compositions have a pretty nice uh, outlife. That would be the storage time at room temperatures. So basically up to two months and now we're looking at even more, we can keep these preparates without refrigeration. Uh, we have also uh, decent uh, gel times and uh, we have done some characterization uh, and you, as you can see here, for instance, uh, we don't need uh, any uh, tougheners to keep uh, interlaminar shear strengths or for the sake of uh, characterization fractal toughness. Okay, so uh, it seems that uh, our resin is self-toughening. Um, we're looking at nanotechnology as well. Many companies in Israel are uh, looking at the nanotechnology in different ways. We're trying to incorporate nanotechnology into a continuous process. So starting from the carbon fiber itself, okay, we have done deposition of carbon nanotubes, single wall and multi-wall. And with single wall, we get a very nice even deposition on the carbon fiber. And then we do micromechanics to characterize the, uh, the, the bonding or the adhesion between the fiber and the matrix. And with the epoxy, we can demonstrate that addition of carbon nanotubes onto the carbon fiber surface enhances or increases the interfacial shear strengths sometimes by twofold. Okay, we have done also fragmentation tests. You can see how little these samples look like. And from here, we are going to uh, go to the uh, macro world and run this machine with the uh, carbon nanotube coated uh, um, carbon fibers and try to demonstrate uh, this technology on a continuous process. Uh, I mentioned uh, two, two technologies that I think uh, Israeli companies are looking at uh, uh, in detail. One is uh, the AFP that I uh, just uh, uh, showed uh, things that are relative to it, related to it. And uh, now I will show you a couple of uh, examples uh, uh, on uh, 3D printing and in specific, specifically FFF or as we call it also FDM. Okay, so in uh, IPRC we have uh, uh, established, uh, I would say a totally automated uh, line to produce filaments for FFF. And you can see uh, the nice units like the hollow off and the uh, winder. I would, I should say that these two units are uh, made in Germany. Okay, we do appreciate uh, German uh, technology and, and uh, production. And uh, basically all this uh, line is uh, made in Germany, I would say. So uh, with the filament line, we can do lots of things. Like for instance, uh, play around with the fibers or, or um, the filaments and coat them. And in this case, we have done some work uh, with a fiber impregnation unit and an electrostatic unit, whereas we can take this filament that is coming out of the extruder and coat it with different fibers, could be also natural fibers, and then print them uh, like a fabric. And I am showing you here a textured uh, 3D printed fabric, which uh, as you can imagine, uh, imagine, uh, uh, it could uh, have the feel of a, a, a textile uh, fabric. Now, do you see that there are many questions already directed at no, you? No, no, I'll, I'll focus on the presentation, but I'm just uh, about to finish, okay? Okay. So we'll have lots of time for questions. Great, okay. great. Um, so from there, we can uh, uh, 3D print composites and we have this uh, 3D printer called Mark II which allows to print continuous fibers uh, into a part. And we have done several uh, demonstrations. 
Something that we have also done uh, within our research program is to check the effect of the shape of the dye itself, the nozzle, on what's been uh, printed on a, a Mark II uh, printer. Uh, and as you see, uh, going from a round die, which is the uh, standard die, to a square die, okay, it could be also be a rectangular die, in a way uh, imitating how uh, uh, walls are made with bricks. Okay, so trying to uh, control the void uh, content. And as you see, by SEM, micrography, and then uh, image analysis, we demonstrate that void content is reduced uh, seriously by using a square diet. So this is just an example of the kind of activities we are uh, running here. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I would uh, like to say just uh, one more sentence. Uh, the companies I, I mentioned in one of the slides, uh, I said they, they are doing uh, classical composites, but you should know that uh, the traditional plastics industry which is also running uh, injection molding and extrusion with uh, a short fiber reinforced composite and SMC and BMC, it's much, much larger, okay, than the uh, classical composite. But just because my students are on a composite material uh, course on classic composite, so I wanted to show that. Anyway, thank you very much. And I, I would like, glad to answer questions now. Thank you very much, Naum. Um... Yeah, that was, um, and thanks again, Elma. Um, that was very interesting to see the, the broad range of, of uh, applications in Israel. There was one question directly from the audience in which other um, fields are um, the AFP uh, is used besides the defense? Uh, right, yeah, no, right, right now all, I mean, yes, actually there is one AFP machine uh, at IAI doing parts for Boeing. Okay, but other than that, the other two are uh, in, involved in defense applications. Okay, thank you. Um, are there, I, I, I would like to open, we are a little bit over the time, but however, I would like to open for our audience um, for one, two questions from the audience to our speakers we have heard before, Elma and, and Naum, and even Vanna. Is there anyone who wants to start? Please just unmute and um, Arne. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have two questions, one for Elma and one for Naum. Uh, maybe start with Elma. Elma, you mentioned that a lot of the glass fiber reinforced plastics are used in the electronic industry. And I was always wondering which exact application that might be. Yeah, these are, uh, for, for example, these, um, uh, I don't know the, the English word, the, the Stromkästen. Okay, ah, okay. The yeah, yeah, the, the cases, yeah, yeah. The cases for yeah. for electric, for, for, for example, that, that's really a, a big amount of material that is used. Yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah. And, and surroundings for cables and things like that, that are also um, okay. part of electric okay. electronics, yeah. Thank you. And and the question to Naum would be, uh, Naum, you mentioned that there is a lot of AFP, uh, AFP usage in, in, in Israel. Is it all thermoplastic or do you see also a trend like we see in Europe uh, that people go more and more to thermoplastic materials for AFP? Yeah, okay, so yes, uh, first of all, uh, people are trying to move from thermoset to thermoplastics and the advantages are clear to all of us. But uh, still some of uh, the companies are working with thermosets, uh, mostly epoxy. Myself, uh, I have developed this resin that I showed you. It's a, a hot melt epoxy. Okay, so it's a thermoset, but uh, for processing, it behaves like a thermoplastic. Mm. So it, uh, it gives you uh, benefit from both worlds. And as I showed you, it also has uh, very good uh, toughening properties. So it's something in between. But yes, uh, the, the uh, industry is trying to move to the thermoplastic uh, composite. It's not easy. Okay, there's lots of issues with thermoplastics, impregnation, and so and so, availability of materials. Sometimes, sometimes we have an issue also with end use. Okay, uh, <laughs> not always. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but okay, uh, okay, and 
I hope I, I answered your question. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. As soon as possible. Thank you. Um, are there other questions? Yeah, from Bena, um, please. Yes. Uh, hello, this is some company in Germany. So uh, yesterday we have seen the presentation from Karmaya where they are spreading the fiber, impregnating and producing the sheet. And afterwards we have seen also the presentation of um, for the robots from AFPT, where the slit tapes are being then used for the um, next processes, but the middle is actually missing, uh, where this big sheet would be slit, yeah, and produced the the spool or the pancakes, or sometimes they have also uh, mixed lines where thermoset and thermoplastic. Can be could be made um, slit toe or deep toe. Yeah, both could be done. Is something like this already being produced in Israel, or is it any plan for the near future? Okay, uh, no, uh, there is no uh, production now in Israel for uh, slit tape. I mean, composite slip tape. Uh, the machine you saw uh, is actually the only one. It's 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 in. Uh, you know, it's a large scale uh, machine. But yes, uh, there are plans to upscale to a uh, production line in the future or in the near future, depending on budget, I guess. Okay, so if this is something that, that you can uh, support and uh, uh, we can discuss, of course. Thank you very much. We'd love to. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, question that is bringing us always more and more in technical details, Bena. Um, and looking at the time, I just don't want to interrupt the discussion, but we will have further time for discussion. But now I'm very happy to introduce Tiag von Reden again, because I have to admit that it becomes uh, a bit too technical for my understanding. So I'm very, very happy that we have uh, with Tiark uh, the chair of our pitching session that is from the sector and uh, from actually from my carbon um, that is uh, um, that is um, the cluster in the Co um, Composites United Association in Germany. So, Tiag, you just uh, introduce yourself and he will present the, the, the German companies that will pitch after that. Obviously, again, you are always invited to, to, to questions. And if we become more and more specific, I think it's just uh, what uh, our speakers, our next speakers want to become. Thank you very much, and the stage is yours, Tiark. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. you, Thomas, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm happy to um, moderate also today the um, company presentation session. Maybe for um, those who have not the chance to join us yesterday, um, really short, only two sentences to um, um, the carbon uh, composites. Yes, sorry, the Composite United and Mike Carbon. The Composite United is an, an industrial driven network in the center of Europe. We have um, regional departments in uh, Germany, in Belgium, Switzerland, and Austria. And um, we are focused on yeah, fiber reinforced high performance materials. That means um, fiber reinforced plastics, but also uh, ceramics or, or concrete. And with um, four, nearly 400 members, we are yeah, one of the largest um, networks for light rating technology and um, fiber reinforced materials. So, but um, more I don't want to say about our association. Um, if you are looking for partners in Europe and um, you do not find them um, today or in the presentations yesterday, just feel free to contact us. Um, I think in our network, we will find the right um, partner for, for your projects or for your interests. So let's directly start with the um, company presentations. Um, yesterday, we have seen some companies who who yeah, make machines for production parts or um, for testing parts. Um, but um, 
or, or for handling uh, textiles, but um, we have not seen uh, companies who produce really the materials. And um, today we have uh, two of them. The first um, will be the Bufa uh, thermoplastic composites and um, Dirk Punke will uh, present this, this company. So um, Dirk, the, the stage is yours. Thank you. I will try to start uh, the engine. Uh, with my uh, company presentation. Can you see it? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, great. Um, how can I move on? Ah, that's right. So Bufa is a uh, very old, uh, not very old uh, company uh, founded in 1883. And we have uh, various uh, business areas. Uh, like composites, uh, cleaning, and chemicals. Uh, our company is uh, in a new business area, uh, founded in uh, 2019, and uh, we are uh, distributing and also uh, manufacturing uh, some types of uh, thermoplastic composites. Uh, myself, uh, I was uh, for 25 years here in this uh, composites area, as uh, Emma said, uh, glass fiber reinforced plastics are a very old product and uh, we started making uh, glass fiber reinforced composites or distribution that also specialties in 1961. And uh, uh, after 25 years, we decided it's uh, time to go on with thermoplastic composites. And you saw also in the uh, presentation of Emma that uh, thermoplastic composites are moving forward. In, Um, as I said, Bufa was uh, founded in uh, 1883. We made uh, about 220 million uh, turnover uh, last year, 560 employees. And uh, due to our uh, cleaning business, we were not very high affected uh, this year by the Corona crisis. We have a lot of business locations in, uh, in Europe basically in Germany, where we were founded, but uh, also in all other parts uh, of Europe. Um, we had uh, today also uh, presented by now uh, some uh, yeah, things about thermoplastics, uh, thermosets, and so on. And uh, uh, I also know both worlds, and uh, I see really a lot of advantages with thermoplastics. So, um, like easy transport, easy storage. We have uh, no emissions. That's a, a very hot topic in, in Germany in the moment. Uh, and so you see, we have a lot of uh, uh, advantages. Um, our shareholders uh, want us to have um, yeah, a more sustainable uh, future. So this is uh, a company policy that we want uh, to invest in a sustainable portfolio with uh, natural fiber-based materials, with uh, yeah, thermoplastics who are better to recycle. We have also post-consumer recyclates uh, in our portfolio. And uh, yeah, we always try to renew our portfolio with this kind of sustainable material. Our product range is uh, in the moment, um, yeah, for a startup quite big. Um, but we had a lot of opportunities uh, here in Germany and also in Europe uh, to get uh, interesting products. For example, we have a conductivity master batches uh, based on uh, single wall carbon nanotubes for thermoplastics. We have uh, natural fibers and natural fiber based fabrics. We have uh, um, long fiber thermoplastic pellets uh, for injection molding or thermoforming. We have a lot of unidirectional tapes and uh, from these tapes we also made uh, customized laminates. And we have as a distribution uh, some uh, sandwich panels. This uh, composite uh, uh, or conductive uh, paste um, is manufactured uh, by our uh, sister company, Buffer Composite Systems. And uh, uh, initially it was uh, developed for uh, thermoset applications for polyester resins, epoxy resins. Um, but we also have some applications now in uh, thermoplastics. Very difficult to handle, so not, not for everybody, um, because you need very high shear forces for that. Um, we are very happy to be partner of uh, Cordenka, 
who are one of the world's biggest uh, producer of cellulose fiber, uh, rovings, uh, fabrics, and also short fibers, for example, for compounding for thermoplastic materials. And uh, it's a very unique material. From my point of view, it's the only material that increases the impact strength, the uh, tensile strength, and also the HDT. And uh, so it's a uh, very interesting compounding uh, material for, uh, for example, polypropylene. Um, LFT we make together with our Indian uh, partner uh, SkyEye, uh, also very interesting materials, uh, a little bit of a forgotten technology. So LFT was very strong in, in the 80s and uh, the 90s. Um, and uh, you can have uh, very interesting mechanical properties, less warpage and so on, uh, with a pellet that you can really handle with uh, every injection loading machine. Yeah, very interesting, and this is one of our main focus materials here uh, in Europe, but we meanwhile have really a worldwide business with this kind of materials because we have a very broad uh, portfolio and we offer very unique uh, combinations of materials. So not only the mother rolls, um, there we are uh, a distributor, but you can see also here uh, our portfolio. So starting from glass fiber, polypropylene, uh, 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 to uh, carbon fiber, poly uh, eta ketone ketone, uh, PPS, uh, but also we have meanwhile in the portfolio a flex based polypropylene tape uh, that is very, really interesting, very interesting properties and also uh, nice aesthetics. And now this is a, a really interesting thing um, and very unique uh, offer that we make to the market. We offer our slit tapes on various spools. So transverse winding on cardboard, transverse winding on Hefner spool, a straight winding. So I heard the pancake uh, on Hefner spool, but also straight winding on cardboard. And there we can start at uh, three millimeters. Um, so here with this uh, uh, transversal winding, we start with three millimeter uh, widths and we can go up to the uh, mother roll uh, size, of course. And depending uh, uh, on the supplier, we can uh, make up to 4,000 meter, which is difficult to handle on, on a spool, yes. But um, we have a lot of uh, offers uh, there. Our standard length is currently this 200 meter. And this is also something that we want to uh, offer, that we uh, have materials on stock that you can uh, order it within two weeks, for example. Um, here we have uh, another picture of semi-finished products. So we offer uh, laminates with uh, yeah, different fiber orientations from uh, 090 up to quasi-isotropic uh, build-up uh, that you can use for example for overmolding. There we have already a lot of interesting projects from uh, glass fiber polypropylene uh, and currently we have some carbon fiber PPS laminates that we are selling. Sandwich panels is a very new uh, product within our portfolio um, uh, and uh, quite interesting because you can bend them, you can uh, mold them, uh, you can uh, coat them uh, nice and uh, but in the moment uh, a small product in our range. So I'm through with it. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I hope I was in time. And um, yeah, I'm back again. Yeah, <clears throat> perfectly. Yeah, you're perfectly in time. Um, uh, to, so, to the fact that we start a bit late, I would say uh, we have time for one question. Is there, is there any question out of the audience? Just unmute your microphone and start to speak. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah Orek. Hi. Uh, could you elaborate a little about your ni natural fibers, uh, thermoplastic composite, with, with, you mentioned flux? Yeah, this is a flux, carbon, and glass fiber. This is our, our current portfolio. And also uh, in the long fiber thermoplastic pellets, where we started uh, with the cellulose fiber. 
So our offer is the carbon fiber, glass fiber, cellulose fiber, and uh, flex fiber. And this flex fiber, is it short fiber, long fiber, what kind of continuous it's, fiber? In this tapes, it's a, a, a long fiber and a unidirectional. Based on the flux, yeah? Based on the flux, yeah. Okay, it's very interesting. Yeah, it really looks brilliant. Uh, it's very interesting uh, properties also. And what is the main matrix? Uh, we use uh, polypropylene because uh, it's uh, widely used uh, as over molding material also, but uh, we have it also with the PLA, mm. which is quite difficult to get at the moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, M maybe one I question. For, yeah. I have one question, Dirk. Um, maybe can you confirm? You're doing the uh, lamination and the slitting in house or also with partners? We do it uh, both, uh, okay. but the big volume we do with partners. Okay, but for small volume also you are able to make it yeah. in-house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are a startup, so uh, we also have uh, some investment plans, but uh, in the moment we are uh, a small team uh, with a small budget, and so we do a lot of things uh, out of house, but uh, I think when uh, is as successful as in the last weeks, then we will invest in the next year. Okay. So p perfect. And um, thanks again for the um, presentation. And um, we will come to the next company. Um, again, in a company who um, yeah, produces parts, but I'm happy that um, this time, as far as I see, the focus is not on fiber reinforced plastics, um, but um, in this case, um, we are looking more for, for metals. And yeah, I'm happy about this because metals are also quite good material. And um, yeah, um, the company Berlinger Group and um, will be presented by the chief himself. Yes, hello. Uh, Thanks for, for introduction and uh, support till now. Um, yeah, it's, it, I think it's a little bit of hard work to, to make the move from, from uh, composites, plastics, and uh, these kind of technology uh, to, to uh, our metal business, more or less. But um, I try to do it. Weiter? Yeah, uh, from from um, what where we are, the the Berliner Group. Uh, you saw it in, on the on the first page. Um, I think we are we are an engineering driven manufacturing company uh, located in, in Germany in the south with the headquarter, uh, but with a focus uh, even also on international markets. And uh, there you see some uh, some examples. Uh, of countries uh, where we where we supply and uh, interesting uh, companies there and yeah one uh, what was well, what is the reason for for the interesting to to Israel um, I had the chance to uh, stay in Israel in the beginning of 2019 um, and saw the the high tech mentality and this innovation. A ghost ship and this this absolutely uh, technical leadership feeling, and that was more or less the the startup for for our ideas uh, to come in in contact with with companies in in Israel. And as there was the chance to do that in this in this circle, uh, it was a fantastic fantastic possibility. Okay, right on. Uh, yeah, what we, what we do uh, in the moment, we are we are a, more or less a typical mid-sized German group with an with an DNA of an automotive supplier. Uh, as my father founded the company uh, 35 years ago, more than for 35 years ago, we started as a classical supplier. We do that what our customers uh, want. And uh, yeah, so over the time, uh, we, we get a completely different DNA. Um, it has to do with the parts we, we produce and the business we are. Uh, in automotive, we are 
we are more or less uh, that guys who realize prototypings and pre-series uh, components. You can see, uh, you can say that uh, there who was the volume small and the complexity high. Um, that is our, our range for such things. And, uh, but even not only the automotive sector is Im impressive and uh, for us and, and, and our business. Uh, so we have different uh, situations to the machinery and plant engineering, aerospace and astronautics becomes more and more uh, important parts. It's a small part, but it grows up. And in, inside the, the automotive business, we are absolutely since a couple of years, consequently on the way, coming from 100% combustion uh, engine technology uh, to, to now more than uh, the other sides, uh, e-mobility and alternative uh, powertrain systems. Okay, Baida? Um, yeah, therefore we use, we use um, an interesting technology from our point of view. Um, it's uh, 3D printing in metal. And uh, we started with, with, our, with our activities in that business in 2012. So that means more than eight years uh, that we are consequent uh, on the way to, uh, to a production and, 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 and uh, um, manufacturing company for that. And um, yeah, as, as um, we had the first ideas of this technology, uh, in that way, uh, we did not know exactly what what's the future. Um, is it is it an, an fine alternative to the other uh, technologies we use or are on the market, or what's what's the main part? Um, now that we see that this is fantastic possibilities to think out of the box and produce out of the box. Um, we have a, a directly focus on metal, uh, and that's a little bit uh, the different to that what what I hear this morning before and uh, later on too. And uh, yeah, we have uh, also focus on on bigger parts. Right? Um, yeah. What what is the what is the 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 fine side of that? Uh, the, the picture, uh, even there you see on several pages, is uh, an, a project we've done uh, in, in, in several steps and in several technologies. But the picture you saw, you see there, uh, is a 3D printed uh, gearbox for, for a hypercar. And uh, let, me, let me say what, what, is, what is for us the, the, big, the big issue or uh, advantage. Um, it's a really high-speed process. Um, we have a really, really uh, short time period uh, in realization against the normal and other uh, technologies. Um, you have, as a customer, and we have to, uh, absolute maximum of freedom of construction. So that is a, a big advantage, but uh, a hurdle on the other side uh, of the development departments of our customers and so on. And what is the, the really fine thing is uh, that we have here a toolless production and uh, the time to production uh, readiness is even only a few days in the most cases. And uh, on the right side, you see uh, the space we can, we can use and that is, that is for us the, the key figure, um, 800, 400, 500 millimeters. Uh, that's a big, that's a big, the biggest space uh, workload you can have in this laser powder bed fusion technology. Right, Tom? Uh, yeah, but um, for us, and that's an that's, uh, uh, interesting side in our working side is to combine uh, technologies together, uh, not even for every for every case uh, is one technology the right one, and it's not only such a black and white discussion. Um, we want to give our customers for their products 
the best solution they they can expect. And sometimes, uh, if the if the volume is higher, uh, or there are special uh, backgrounds um, uh, necessary, it's it's even fine uh, to cast the parts. So there we. We, we use our own uh, foundry and our own casting technology, Vita. And it's uh, especially in, in our way, the low pressure uh, sand casting technology. It's a, it's a, a technology for, for very, very good uh, mechanical uh, marks and, um, and uh, uh, high complexity parts. Uh, there we, we do prototyping components, uh, low volume series uh, parts, and uh, even we combine it with the gra gravity technology. So we, we use two, two um, uh, casting uh, technologies for the projects. And there we are free on, on the space. Uh, so the advantage is we can do bigger parts than, than as we can then built uh, via, uh, via 3D printing. Okay, right on. Yeah, um, every of our customers want to have at the end fully complete ready parts. And they want not to be the referee for any process steps. Uh, they order parts and they want to have 100% functional guarantees and they want to use it in their assembly uh, line for their machines, for their for their cars, for their satellites, and so on. And uh, so that is necessary to have uh, also a high tech uh, high tech uh, machining center. Uh, we have that uh, by Tom uh, with uh, five and six axis technology um, with uh, with a high competence. Uh, for the high-end precision, uh, we have climate-controlled uh, uh, technical departments. We have the modern uh, technology you can you can uh, use in the market. Uh, we have uh, a lot of testing and validation possibilities. Infrastructure by by uh, in our house. Sometimes we we build uh, we build these these uh, equipment by by ourselves, uh, may leak testing uh, uh, machines, uh, plants we, we build by ourselves, we designed and engineer and, and build it uh, also. And even here also, uh, it's the same. We, we start uh, at piece one uh, and we are able to, to produce uh, over all technologies, uh, uh, thousands of, of parts per year. Uh, the lowest, the lowest volume is possible in in uh, additive manufacturing. Clear, uh, more is it possible in in casting and, and and machining. But we we try to find uh, even the solutions for for our for our customers. Right, Tom? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's uh, uh, my very very uh, short presentation. Uh, about that, uh, my name Franz Bollinger. Um, as the CEO, I'm I'm the the, the sales guy, and uh, and uh, also also that uh, guy for strategy, uh, together with our board, and even also uh, Marion Siebold, uh, who organized also this 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 platform uh, side from our side here. And yeah, what what is what is what is the the, at, at least the, 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 situ, the situation. Um, engineering driven manufacturing company, uh, not with the own product, but we realize the very, very complex products of our, of our customers. Uh, and um, yeah, they, I, I said it to you, they, they tried to find uh, solutions. They want not to have only parts. They want to have solutions and they want to have whole processes. And that started with the first idea of engineering of our customers. Then we start our work with them together because 
a lot of, of uh, guys in the design shops and in the design departments, the engineers have wonderful ideas, but uh, wonderful ideas should be uh, industrial abled. Uh, so it's, 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 a, it's a way from the idea to an in intelligent industrial way um, in the market to become it uh, as, a, as a hardware. And uh, there we start with our business and uh, a lot of a lot of work is on the engineering side to make the product with our customers together better than we start and after that to to realize this hardware for their for their machine systems uh, and so on yeah many thanks to you uh, uh, for your intention um, and uh, may if you had any questions um, feel free Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, yeah, maybe one one question. Um, if there's, I, yeah. I have a remark and a question. Uh, since you are doing a metal uh, SLS, uh, I suggest uh, maybe through the chamber to contact the Institute of Metals at Technion. They are doing a lot of research on, uh, you know, uh, 3D printing with metals and I, I think they could be a good match for you. They have a meeting with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Now, another question. Um, since you are doing also the engineering part of it, of the story, what can you tell the audience about uh, design for uh, optimization of, uh, let's say, strength to weight? Mm -hmm. Which is one of the major uh, reasons why we're using 3D printing for the first place. Yeah. Um, our engineering team. That is that what I mean. Uh, in in the most cases. Well, we have we have several several types of, of customers. If you have a customer um, who wants to design a part for 100,000 uh, volume per year, uh, they never they never think about uh, the SLM or laser powder bed fusion technology. Uh, they think in their traditional way. Uh, so that's not that's not bad. That's not good. That's even the realistic side and from the commercial side may the interesting part. But um, and they use the the three D printed parts uh, as a copy for their for their serial parts. So there we make copies uh, more or less from from die casting products. Uh, with the with the fit that uh, they have uh, on a very very sh um, um, early time parts who they can test and validate uh, and they looks completely similar to that what they have later on in the serial pro product side that is one side that's that we do also that's more or less bread and butter jobs and that's okay but that's not uh, that uh, how you can fly to the moon. The other side is when you have when you have uh, customers who have parts who are who are casted till now or fully machined from the block, and they are heavy or they have not so much functionals as they expect. We make together with them, and that's the even the a, a, a part of dialogue and communication and, and work together uh, how we can optimize uh, the design, how we can reduce the weight how we can make functional uh, integrations in such parts. And so that's, that's even the daily work of our engineers uh, together with the customers. But it's, it's, a, it's a, a big hurdle uh, for, for a lot of customers uh, to count on this 3D printing technology because they want to have in uh, most cases till now, now it's better, but uh, a few years ago, they want to have several possibilities to, to, to produce a part. And it's a hard work and hard, hard uh, communication to give them the right ideas and to use all the advantages of this really fine technology in that way. But that's our daily work. It's not only to, to print parts, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, 50 or 60% driven by the engineering side and the realization side. Okay, thank you. I, ju I just wonder how far you are going in terms of optimization, you know, with the software design uh, package, 
to do 3D printing, which is different from all the standard, you know. Our mind is built for Cartesian or cylindrical geometries. This is how we are taught at school. Yeah. Now we have to think in many other uh, yeah. axes. And this is not intuitive. So I, I just wonder how far have you gone in, in that? Mm -hmm. But thank you anyway. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you very much for this presentation and this um, step in the metal world. Um, now we will come back to the um, polymers and um, we will have um, a yeah, research institution. Um, the um, IPF, and this will be presented by um, Axel. Um, and even if he has the uh, magic power to disappear, um, don't worry, he will appear a short time later again. So um, Axel, the stage is yours. Um, your microphone is... Yeah, that's yeah. true. And actually, <clears throat> I'm not starting. Uh, my colleague, Christina Scheffler, so we have a joint presentation today. Um, she will okay. start the presentation with her talk first. Okay. So, thanks a lot. And thanks for the opportunity to speak here and to introduce our institute. My name is Christina Scheffler. I'm head of the work group fiber modification. And next to me, you see my colleague, Axel Spittenheuer, who is the head of the work group complex structural components. Our institute is located in Dresden, which is in the eastern part of Germany. And uh, Dresden is also the capital of the federal state of Saxony. Um, if you ever have the chance to come here, you should combine your visit with, uh, yeah, with a touristic tour through the city, since Dresden is famous for its historical buildings and also for the beautiful landscape around. You can see here the campus of our institute, we, where uh, research is done since 1948. At our institute, we have nearly 500 co-workers that are working uh, here in five institutes and half of it are scientists. Also, we welcome about 100 guest scientists, scientists each year um, over um, that come from over uh, 30 countries. So we are quite an international institute. And also we are quite um, productive since our institute publishes more than 350 peer reviewed publications every year. Our institute is committed to the um, application oriented fundamental research. And we get our money from the federal state, uh, from the federal, federal and the state government by 50%. In our institute, we cover the whole range from um, polymers. That means we are um, developing new, uh, new um, molecules and uh, also developing um, new nanomaterials that we use um, in the polymers. And we cover the full range from nano to micro to macro scale. This is especially true for the um, formation of composites and the development of composites where we use the new materials that we get in um, the material design for, for fibers or for matrix materials. And out of that, um, we are producing new um, composite structures. In the image here, you can see one of the process chains that has been developed in one of our previous projects. One of the highlights in our institute is our glass fiber spinning line, where we can produce um, e-glass fibers and even alcohol resistant glass fibers that are used in the building sector. Um, also, we have done spinning trials with A-glass or bioglass, so we can vary the um, glass composition. And also we are able to produce um, polymer matrix um, materials that are produced in um, melt spinning. And um, one special thing about our spinning line is that we can combine the E-glass um, e -class fibers with the polymer fibers. And uh, we can do this in one single um, process. That means that we spin um, simultaneously the glass and the polymer fibers to a hybrid yarn. The commingling process is done on the sizing roll that you can see here. And also the development of sizings is one of our um, main um, research focus that we have at the Institute. Um, the sizing is actually responsible for the textile processing, but also for the chemical functionalities that we apply on the surface of fibers so that they can interact with different matrix materials. 
You can see here one of our hybrid yarn uh, rovings that is produced with glass fibers, but um, we are also able to produce um, polymer filaments alone without the glass fibers, and then we can combine them with carbon fibers or any other fiber like natural fibers or um, basalt fibers. Um, for the characterization of our modified uh, fiber surfaces, we have a broad range of uh, methods at our institute. Some of them are shown here. For example, we can use um, XPS measurements um, for the functional groups or also uh, theta potential measurements. We are able to do um, wetting experiments by single fiber tensometers. And we are one of the customers of uh, Text Techno who gave their presentation yesterday. Um, we have a Fabimat Plus that we use for the de determination of the single fiber tensile strength, which is very much depending on the surface treatment. Furthermore, we have a lot of um, microscopy methods, and uh, I think we are really well equipped at our institute for any kind of um, char characterization. Um, also, we go further to the composite level with the new materials that we developed by uh, filament winding or vacuum infusion process. We can produce endless fiber reinforced composites as a UD plate. And also we can use our fiber in the, for short fiber reinforced composites in an extrusion and compounding process where we produce our specimens by injection molding. Um, one of the uh, research focus for us is also the micromechanical testing that we do by single fiber pullout test. We have um, a broad uh, knowledge in this field and have different um, devices to pull out single fibers from a matrix droplet to get an information about the fiber matrix interaction. Uh, this um, equipment was also introduced yesterday by Tex Techno by the um, FEMA test which was um, commercialized uh, together with our institute. Okay, at this point, I would like to hand over to Axel. So <clears throat> I hope not, I'm not disappearing all the time, so visually. So um, the technology we are working here and which was actually invented about um, now 25 years ago, the Taylor Fire Placement te Technology. It's a kind of uh, technology which stands in between 3D printing and uh, automated fire placement. Uh, for that, we use, um, uh, well, basically modified um, embroidery machines to so have a textile near net shape uh, variable actual preform uh, to be manufactured. Um, we have um, the chance, um, despite or, or the contrast to 3D printing or AFP, that we can apply nearly any arbitrary material, fiber material directly from the spool. So it could be natural fibers, glass, or uh, carbon fibers. So we don't have any special treatments or, um, well, uh, improvements for for uh, costs there or increase of costs and um, in um, contrast also to AFP we have the chance to have a really small placement ready down to five millimeter and then or with that chance we can uh, apply uh, the roving material in really distinct directions and to have a technology ready for what we call a variable actual uh, fiber placement. We have already three spin-off companies from our institute. Um, um, Hitex and QPoint are mo mostly on the application side. They produce, for instance, um, sports um, goods, uh, also high performance parts um, for, for um, well, sport industry, biking parts, or the Airbus 380, uh, 350 has been well equipped with TFP performance in terms of the window frames made by them. The Compass Fiber Structures um, company, spin-off company, is, or is, is creating special CAA uh, computer-aided design um, or computer-aided engineering software for this kind of variable actual technology. The benefit from, from, our, from such a process, uh, in contrast to multi-actual composites, um, where we have a high carbon cutoff um, and loss, lot, um, loss of uh, carbon fiber materials, um, we, we can uh, generate or we can tailor the fiber according to special load cases. And I think this was something uh, requested by Naum, uh, that uh, we're really working on this field, uh, applying, for instance, topology optimization or material optimization strategies for this highly anisotropic uh, material behavior, which we can achieve with a variable actual composite design. So additionally to the carbon cutoffs for this example of a, a bicycle brake booster, um, as we see here, the load case, uh, we can, um, by tailoring um, the, um, 
the, the fibers in a certain direction and not only by using this kind of generative uh, manufacturing techniques, uh, increase the mass specific stiffness um, by applying basically the same carbon and uh, roving um, and uh, matrix material uh, dramatically in that case here in this example up to 130 percentage. Um, the work group um, additionally working on, on different fields. So for one is uh, the, the modeling aspect, especially for the mesoscale uh, material behavior of um, the stitching process, very interesting for us. And uh, we, we did a lot of work here. And really central point of our group is the development of optimization methods. Um, here the question how a variable actual design could be utilized in order to gain uh, the maximum lightweight performance, meaning minimum mass uh, added to a part and uh, gaining maximum stiffness and strength of such a, um, um, with this technology generated part. We're also working on the modification and have good relation to machine manufacturers um, and um, doing machine modifications uh, there as well, for instance, applying multi-matrix composite um, concepts, which is a, a current um, well, project, uh, ongoing project on our side. And finally, we're also working on developing of the process chain for this kind of variable actual composite parts, as this is not a really well-established part or, or, or process compared to multi-actual composites. Um, there's still a lot of things we learn with our own developed tools um, for, yeah, um, manufacturing and also designing of such structures. So with that, we would like to thank you for your patience and would be happy to have questions on your side or looking forward to the um, distinct meetings together. Yes, um, thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions? Again, just feel free to unmute your microphone. I mean, just a short question. How are you modeling your uh, parts with this the technology that you showed now? Okay, we, we, we developed our own modeling uh, software, which we're going to distribute uh, with the complex fiber structures company. Actually, I'm also a CEO of this company. And um, this is a, a special modeling software, which, um, um, well, has two functionalities. One is uh, post-processing. Uh, we can uh, derive, like for instance, principal stress directories and utilize them for um, um, generating um, homogenized models. So you can use standard final element uh, software for that. And um, for that, we have well, well, I can I can show you details. But uh, the question is, we have our own developed software for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, so then we will come. Uh, to um, the next company, um, we will go back to the start of the value chain again, um, to the um, materials. And um, Christos uh, Karatsias will uh, present the company Mitsui Chem Chemicals. Thank you. Um, I will start. So yeah, my name is Christos. I'm working for Mitsui Chemicals Europe. Um, and would like to step into the yeah, same direction a little bit like in thermoplastic composite. Um, a short comment to the, to the company. Um, we are global chemical supplier, many different areas um, involved, uh, not only mobility, but also healthcare, food and packaging. This gave us a quite, um, let's say, easier way to go through the crisis this year. However, still for the composite, it's uh, mobility is still a, a, big, um, a big topic. Um, still, we are globally, but uh, we are situated in, in, in Germany, in, in Düsseldorf, with our um, headquarter, and we're quite spread in, in, in Europe with different companies. Sometimes um, it's not always uh, visible that they are part of the Mitsui Chemicals Group. Um, but, um, well, this is not the topic as for today. I would like to step into directly into the materials we are looking into for the composite industry. Um, this on the one side, on the right, the more daily business, it's uh, operated by our subsidiary ACE in the Netherlands. It's a long fiber reinforced thermoplastic uh, based on polypropylene. Um, on the other side today, the topic will be more about the um, continuous fiber reinforced thermoplastic, the UD tapes. 
And um, especially, um, we heard earlier this day from, from Dirk, different kind of material combinations. Uh, Mitsui Chemicals has a quite a big footprint in polypropylene. Therefore, we decided several years ago to start with uh, PP in this business and especially with carbon fiber. Um, not a, a more exotic, um, let's say, combination. Um, not many um, um, combination existing in that field, maybe more in the field of short fiber or long fiber. Um, there was necessary work to do to combine those two materials. Those who are um, working with PP know that it's not a, the best bonding material. Um, and therefore we started the, the combination with carbon fiber by changing the sizing of the carbon fiber with the carbon fiber manufacturer together. So uh, in line uh, during their production, they're putting our own sizing on the carbon fiber. Um, we are coming also from the other side from the PP modification. And this is our main background as a chemical material supplier and join those two materials. Um, to give you an idea um, also what could be the benefits in this area, um, for example, based on uh, heat deflection curve, um, we have a yeah, typical block PP material where the heat deflection started already um, after 40 degrees. We have some yeah, glass fiber PP materials, um, short fiber, long fiber, um, where we're increasing already. Um, let's say that the deflection temperature starting around 80 degree, 100 degree. Um, but if we're starting with the carbon fiber combining this, um, we can extend the, the heat deflection temperature um, yeah, nearly uh, before starting um, to melt. It doesn't mean I would recommend to use it directly until this temperature, but it gives you an idea that um, if you're thinking about polypropylene, you don't have to think anymore just about the standard compound material. Yeah? By joining with a composite material, you have a lot of more flexible uh, in field of material properties to increase compared to neat um, um, compound materials. And especially the carbon fiber could be an additional benefit in this area. Um, about the processability, um, we are tape supplier. So we're producing the mother coils. We split in this in-house with partners, just depending on the location. We're chopping the fiber. And one idea is that mentioned also this, for example, is to make a sheet out of it. It could be different areas, different um, yeah, points out. It could be a, a woven sheet. So using the, the tapes to, to weave them and to make a laminate. We can multi-axial sheets, um, even full carbon fiber or hybrid one. We can use the chopped fibers, for example, to make a random sheets, or also to use the, the slitted tapes for make a, a local sheet patching. It means we can take any PP-based um, existing uh, uh, laminate, either if it's, a, it's organic sheet from laminates or if it's any other sheets. If it's just PP, we can always give an additional uh, performance by um, patching them. Um, what could be the processing methods? Yes, for sure, it could be injection molding with the sheets, it could be thermoforming. Um, we can have visible carbon fiber parts using the random sheets, or also going to the sandwich panel production. So combining a, here, for example, a PP foam, but could be any other PP-based core uh, with the sheet layers. Another option is the tape placement. We heard also yesterday from different machines um, making more complex structures, for example, um, using them also in the injection molding, but having more local reinforcement, for example. Um, either if it's one layer, it's quite simple, but of course you can combine a more complex structure and to put it in the injection molding machine. And also we heard yesterday the tape winding. It means we are um, yeah, winding a different kind of, of tubes. And for later one, um, and this is something you can do with thermoplastics quite, quite easier. It's uh, to post uh, process it, for example, to bend the tube after you make a straight tube to your flexible geometry or also to overmold your winded tube. Uh, especially those things you cannot do with thermoset materials. It's a quite huge benefit with a thermoplastic to have always the possibility to functionalize it also later on. Um, here is just um, um, just a confirmation about um, from tape to sheet. Uh, what I wanted to emphasize here is also if we're talking about woven sheets, for example, or multi-axial sheets, 
in any cases, there's always a possibility to combine. You know, full carbon fiber might be the best performance, but in terms of price and cost, there might be also solutions in between. Yeah, so that you can combine any glass fiber with carbon fiber hybrids um, in the weaving mode or also in the full carbon fiber and uh, hybrid mode for multi axial so that you have a quite of higher benefit. Um, what you can also do, um, what I mentioned also by post-processing, you can produce your part and then maybe reinforce it also later with the UD tapes. So it doesn't mean you have to put it uh, integrated in the injection molding. So the machines, for example, with uh, from AFPT yesterday shown, yeah, they have uh, specially developed heads where they can use uh, go inside the, uh, the the part and reinforce from the inner part. To give you an example here, it's a, a bumper fascia uh, without any numbers of laying uh, of the UD tapes. You have a deflection over 30 millimeters. Yeah, we um, patch them in the inner side with three layers. Um, just one layer, but on three positions, then you have already a uh, deflection uh, below 10 millimeter. Uh, with two layers, then you have a, um, um, still a deflection where you usually need the front bumper, uh, a bumper fascia of 3.3 kilogram. Now you have a 2.5 kilogram by uh, decreasing the thickness. So this is something for, with a carbon fiber for sure for stiffness driven parts, which can make the, the importance of improvement. Um, Let's say for the mobility, you have really different areas where you can go and straighten these things. Here's a kind of overview. You will receive anyway the, the presentation later on as well. Yeah, for example, we're working on the tailgate for the stiffness increase, but also with lower weight. And this can um, um, lead to lower tooling costs. Yeah? Or for example, in the underbody cover, um, it's the same reason, but especially here, you can uh, reduce the thickness and um, by having a higher stiffness because maybe the, the deflection area is limited in the underbody areas. And so you have very different areas, either full carbon for sure, that's maybe more for premium cars, yeah, but also in the field of hybrid materials with the existing polypropylene parts, there's a possibility to, to um, combine those materials. In another area um, where could be have any potential, uh, we're working uh, and bicycle components, yeah, if it's in a saddle, yeah, of using the bending of the tubes, for example, uh, different shapes are possible. I think um, um, this is also th something um, which could be important for later on. On the other side, for sports equipment, yeah, I, I mentioned this uh, local patching. Um, this could be not only a patching of organo sheets, this could be also a patching of, for example, self reinforced PP materials, yeah, which is existing uh, on the market. Um, and also you can combine it, for example, with a, with a wood core we made here um, with a partner in Japan for a skateboard, for example. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very, um, yeah, very flexible, very uh, high variety. Um, um, this is something, and I saw the comment just a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, we need to make also the plastic industry aware of uh, using those kind of materials to combine with the existing technologies. Yeah, it's not a, um, sometimes there is an investment, yes, but sometimes you can use a very um, yeah, small equipment to integrate this in your existing processes. So th this is something we have to, to, to show with thermoplastic composites, especially with our material with carbon and PP, we are combining a material which is quite common in the automotive industry, easier to process. And we want to give you now an additional improvement um, by carbon fiber based material um, to increase, let's say, the area where it can be used. Well, um, so I'm finished with my presentation. I hope in time. And um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, are there any questions? If not, I have one question. Um, are your materials also used in the aerospace industries? You have shown now automotive and sports. Um, no, um, this is just um, the reason because it's polypropylene. Um, it's, uh, yeah, if, if it get fired, it will melt. And if it melts, you have no plane anymore. So it's, it's, it should be not the... Uh, um, it's not a, definitely not an area we're focusing with this material combination. Okay. 
Okay, thanks again. Then um, we will come um, to the um, next company. It's uh, Plasticon Germany, and um, yeah, Gunnar Krauser will, will present this um, company. Gunnar, your stage is yours. Yeah, hello, my name is Gunnar Krause. I want to tell you something. You see my screen now, yeah? Right? Yes, perfect. Okay. I want to tell you something about plastic on composites today. We are a producer of customized equipment and piping, and uh, let's say not on the material side as all the speakers, more or less before. So what do we do? We do non-metallic solutions for the industry, and let's say you will learn later on what it means in this case. Industries we are serving as plastic on composites are, let's say, the storage and logistics industry, onshore, offshore, and uh, transport as well in containers. This is the process technology, chlorine, semiconductor, water treatment like desalination and then water cleaning, fertilizer industry, titanium dioxide, FE pickling, metal finishing, and others. And last but not least, the flue gas treatment. Uh, industry, heat displacements, and cooling systems. So Plastic on Composites is having three production facilities and one, let's say, a pipe laying facility. This is in Turun, Poland, is by far the biggest one. In Dienstlag in Germany is for specialities. We have one in Netherlands and Hengelo. This is for producing big equipments up to a 9.2 diameter uh, meter and diameter and a small service uh, location in Belgium for uh, laying pipes. We have revenue of 50 million with approximately 500 employees and the company is more or less over 50 years old. So what do we do? We are producing tanks and apparatus about 500 a year and 130 kilometer of piping. So what do we do? What are our, let's say, products? It starts on the left side with tanks. So simple storage tanks or silos, um, process equipment for the chemical industry. These nice ISO containers are uh, made of steel normally, and we line it with uh, thermoplastic liners. And these are high purity vessels for the chip industry and then these uh, people. Then equipments columns and scrubbers, separators made of thermoplastic for water industry for cleaning, internals for, uh, for columns, and uh, something a bit special for wet electrostatic precipitators, the tube bundles made of PP material of, uh, of pipes. So then piping, it is uh, for process piping in chemical plants and, uh, and mining facilities, wherever. And flue gas ducts, so there's something special. I've been working for this part of the company the last three years. We have produced their uh, ducts for flue gas applications up to a diameter of 12.5 uh, meters in diameter. Some of them are standing in Israel as well, in Ord, Rabin, and uh, Rutenberg. We made two stacks, two big ones. And last but not least, we see uh, products from uh, Plastic on Germany. The linings, this is a glued lining of um, fluorinated thermoplastic liners. This <coughs> is a fixed point lining. I show a bit later more in detail what it is, and so called loose linings. So, what, what do we do? What kind of material we have? The one is a normal GRP, a glass fiber reinforced plastic with a chemical barrier layer made of GRP of a resin rich layer. Then we have a GRP with an inside liner, non-fluorinated thermoplastic liner. And the more, most expensive one is a GRP with a fluorinated thermoplastic liner at the inside. Then we do lining for, linings for steel. Steel with a CBL, so that means you put a resin at the inside of a steel pipe. This is more or less, less than 1% of our turnover, so in the end, not really a business case for us. Um, then we have steel with non-fluorinated thermoplastic liners and steel with fluorinated thermoplastic liners. So these are the thermoplastics we are using in the industry. It is, let's say, more or less from cheap to expensive downwards. 
starts with PE, PVC, PVDF, PTFE, PTFEM, and PFA. Here you saw bits uh, about the acid resistance that starts with PE. This is the first one we can use and the temperature where we do use it, PVC, PVDF. Then there is a normal resin. It goes up to above 150 degrees, but the acid, acid resistance is not so nice. And in the end, uh, PFA and MPDFE you can use for all applications, but is for the most applications by far too expensive, unfortunately. So our products, let's start with the tanks. These are storage tanks with a diameter from 0.5 to, uh, yes, 8.5 is 9.2 meters in the Netherlands, but it's depending on the client. So as long as the client is located close to the shore, we have a facility uh, close to, an, uh, to the shore as well, to, an, uh, to a channel, so we can ship it directly by barge. These are done by uh, with GRP or with uh, thermoplastic liners. Then it's process equipment is more or less with the same diameters up to 8.5 meter. Here is a nice uh, reference for the uh, chemical industry. These are the transport, the ISO containers. This is a glued liner at the inside normally with a fluorinated liner. It's funny, we do it very often for these ISO containers for street transport, but we never did it for train transport, nowhere. I don't know why this is not really used. So equipments, these are columns and scrubbers for uh, flue gas cleaning very often and for other cleaning uh, devices. Yeah, we say normally up to 4.5 meters. We produce that with all thermoplastic liners as well. And up to operating temperatures of 160 degrees. We can do it. This one is having a very high pressure with seven bar. In terms of uh, metal, it's not really something, but for an uh, for non-metallic uh, product, seven bar is, is something. Separators. These are produced in Dienstlaken, made of uh, PP and other stuff, 10.4 by 3.9 meters. For, uh, for grease trap, starch separators, gasoline separators, dirt separators, and gravel separators for all these cleaning facilities. Here are several internals for columns, mist separators, liquid distributors, support grids, and vortex breakers are produced by us. And last but not least is nice wet electrostatic precipitators for uh, filters. So piping is a very standardized product in these uh, days in our company. In the last five years, we have completely renewed our factory in Poland. Let's say over the last uh, 50 years, it was growing and growing and growing, but nobody really took care of the uh, production uh, lines, how it is organized and, and uh, how modern the machines are. So in the last five years, we more or less uh, are renewed the complete uh, facility is in Poland. And here we produce it based on DIN 16965 type B, D and E. This is the one is a normal GRP pipe, or two are normal GRP pipes. And the uh, B is uh, with a thermoplastic liner. This is up to DN1000, it's a standard product at Plasticon. We are producing it up to 1600, 1800, no problem, but this is no standard anymore. So we do piping, headers for electrolysis plants. We supply uh, components or prefabricated spools. So that is depending on what the client wants in, in which remote area he is. Sometimes we really produce spools, so assembled pipes and, and elbows flanges only to, to bolt it on site. And as well for other, let's say more uh, skilled areas, we do it as uh, single components to install it on site. Yeah, this is, you see, you see, so your standard is up to 16 bar. In case of piping, we even went higher, but uh, this is no standard anymore. Then we are producing ducts. This is on the one hand, 
um, these ducts inside of a cool, this inside of a cooling tower of big one for in the, in the coal power plant. Then these smaller ones here for chemical industry. This is a chimney in Poland, so freestanding in, an, uh, in a steel structure. Yeah, these are our ducts and we have an, uh, something special is, we have a sister company in Netherlands that are producing these, these uh, parts on site. So as soon as you are not able to, uh, to transport it to the area, we are installing a winding facility on the site and to produce it there. But therefore you need, let's say a very big amount well, it's uh, very cost extensive, expensive to do so. So liner for steel components. This is something if you have high pressures uh, at the outside and the client wants to use uh, steel. This is a glued liner, which are installed under vacuum inside of, uh, of the equipment is going up to operating temperature of uh, 120 degrees. With these uh, thermoplastic liners, the advantage is that you have an easy cleaning process inside of the equipment. So in the end, uh, you can use it for very for purity processes uh, of equipments. And you can use it with thick ward materials. So if you have a very high pressure, you can use a steel uh, equipment and line it simply with plastic. So uh, you combine both advantages. This is a fixed point lining. This is up to 260 degrees. Very often used in flue gas ducts. So let's say if a power plant is having an old uh, flue gas duct and they are changing the process inside of the power plant, they don't want to build a new duct. They very often use a fixed point lining made of our materials. Or let's say sometimes it's really cheaper if this uh, media is very ag aggressive. If you build a new duct, you can use better lining than the uh, high alloy steel. For that. And this is a loose lining for several assets. So simply you take a uh, thermoplastic liner and uh, fix it between two flanges and that's it. So no gluing, no welding, nothing. So we are plastic and composites. Our advantages are that we are uh, doing mostly fusion weldings for the equipments. So as less as possible hand welding in these equipment with this uh, brings the quality while the weld at the inside is uh, the problem for these equipments. Here we do thermal form dished heads for our equipment. So we do it with a fusion welding made a rectangular plate. Then we heat it up here at the oven in the, in the background and then we press it downwards with this uh, with these form. The next one is that we are uh, doing here the thermoform domes you see here with these uh, with these machine welds. Then the circumferential welds are machine welds, and the nozzle connections are crimped. So let's say we do not weld it here at the let's say at, at the uh, the shell of the equipment, we crimp it down and weld it a bit more uh, at the higher position. So here you have some references from us and then uh, that's it. We have some, for example, it's a scrubber with a diameter of 6.3 meter, height of 16 meter with 220 tons weight that have been built in Poland by far our biggest equipment ever built from Plasticon. This is some job, this is actually under processing so that's why I have only 3D pictures. Again, a scrubber of 7.5 meter for a copper, copper process, a big tank. So as well, this is delivered in parts while it was too high to, to uh, ship it in one part. So we uh, produce it in three parts, brought it by truck to the plant and uh, build it together there. Some storage tanks for HGL 35%, 500 cubic meters and so on. And process tanks. A double segment that has been delivered to Israel some months ago. That was the first project for us uh, with thermoplastic liners for a column.
I only scroll through it. We have many tanks for very aggressive medias like AGF. So that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Um, are there one question maybe? Because we are really out of time. Uh, if I may. Yeah. Just if, if you can uh, say uh, anything about the technologies you are using for the uh, FRP tanks and uh, liners. You said thermoforming. Are you using yeah. rotational molding for the liners? Are you doing filament winding for the tanks? Now for the tanks, we're doing filament winding on, uh, on winding machines. We have uh, some bigger ones in Poland up to 6.6 .6 meter. And we're able to produce in one in Netherlands up to uh, these 9.2 meters of filament winding. And the uh, thermoplastics are formed by a uh, normal, let's say, forming around a wooden form. And then we weld it together with this uh, process. And the dome heads are uh, pressed down under it. Thank you. Okay, thank you again. Then we will come to the uh, last um, your company presentation today. And um, yeah, <clears throat> honeycombs are, are normally well established, and um, you could think there um, could be nothing new, but um, there is something new, more or less new. Um, and uh, Jochen Flug will now uh, present the company Termex um, yeah, with a new kind of production of um, honeycombs. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to present uh, the company Termhex and our technology, which actually was developed by our mother company, Econcore. And uh, it's about uh, honeycomb core materials, thermoplastic honeycomb cores and sandwich technologies, and how we make this very cost efficient and sustainable. So I will talk a little bit about the sandwich construction and honeycombs in general to give you a little bit the state of the art, also on the continuous production of honeycomb cores we do. And then I will show you how we realize cost savings today already with our Tamex technology and uh, with the honeycomb cores and with the organo sandwich material, um, which is a continuously produced sandwich panel. And uh, then finally, I will show some applications from automotive, also with recycled pet honeycombs and with high performance thermoplastic honeycombs for aerospace applications. And towards the end, uh, some outlook to the future, some hierarchical honeycomb cores. So sandwich construction in general can be found in, in nature uh, very broadly and the honeycomb core of the bees is a good example for minimum use of material because nature is also very resource conscious and cost conscious. And of course, in many applications in transportation from packaging to aerospace, one can find sandwich construction today. Um, we target to reduce the material costs and the production costs for those complex sandwich structures with honeycomb cores. Um, there are some more recent presentations of examples here, the, the Falcon uh, um, fairings from SpaceX, also the landing legs uh, from SpaceX are made with um, aluminum honeycomb and, and carbon fiber. And uh, lately there was a presentation where Elon Musk stated that any super fast thing needs to have a honeycomb cores with a sandwich construction with two skins and uh, has presented a battery which actually acts as a, as a core material in the battery housing. So sandwich construction in general can of course be from honeycomb cores or other, honey, uh, other core materials like corrugated cores, extruded cores or, or foam cores. But the honeycomb cores have, due to the vertical cell walls and the supporting cell walls, um, very good properties in compression at very low weight. So they have the best mechanical properties. But in the past, the manufacturing of those structures was expensive and time consuming. And this has to do with the traditional ways of producing, stacking layers together, expanding this to a block and then slicing the honeycomb from this block. In the aerospace case, the Nomex honeycomb is also dipped into phenolic resin and then sliced with a bandsaw, just a labor intensive, also from CO2 efficiency, not a good process. Um, the basic expansion process though, was invented here in Halle where 
um, today and where our company is located in Germany, actually by, by two Jewish families, uh, Heilbrunn and Pinner in 1901, they uh, started the business of, of paper honeycomb cores here in the city of Halle and made several patents. So we are proud to, to have a link to a very long history of uh, honeycomb production here in our city. And, but compared to the traditional way of producing wire a block, we produce in a continuous automated way. So we have one sheet, we form a structure and fold the structure up to create in a continuous endless process a honeycomb core. And this combines aerospace internal structure and material properties with very low weight and good mechanical properties with packaging production principles, continuous automated production and low production costs. And so it's a one uh, yeah, continuous process where we start from extrusion, have a vacuum forming, and then we fold up the core material and can directly inline join the skin material. So this is a continuous automated process. Um, this is a typical production line. So we start from an extruder, have a film extrusion and directly a rotational vacuum forming of this film. And this formed uh, sheet is then folded up and finally laminated with either a non-woven for thermoset processing or directly with thermoplastic skins. So this is a process which reduces weight, material use and processing costs to a minimum. And we have uh, two locations. One location is in Belgium where we license the technology. We have uh, in the meantime, 12 licenses worldwide. We have our own production in Germany in Halle where we produce polypropylene honeycomb cores and sandwich panels. So Leuven is uh, it's just been named the capital of innovation for Europe and uh, in Halle we are proud to be in the birthplace of honeycomb production technology. So we have a, a building uh, with about 5,000 square meters close to the city because it's all thermoplastic processing, very environmental friendly, very clean. So it's a very continuous line. We have automated quality control, thickness measurement, um, automated stacking, um, and we produce the honeycomb core with very small cell sizes, leads to very good surface quality from thickness range from three millimeter to 30 millimeter. And this goes into many different application areas in the composite industry, mostly in the thermoset composite industry today. So with the non-woven on top of the polypropylene honeycomb, we can bond easily epoxy, polyester, um, mostly glass fiber laminates, uh, for wind power turbines, uh, truck side walls, uh, prefabricated bathrooms, um, caravans, uh, caravan floor and side walls and in boats, interior structures and, and decks and uh, inner walls. Um, we had received for a development of a, a polyamide based honeycomb with polyamide composite skins, uh, the Jack Innovation Award, it was used in, in solar modules. And uh, we have in automotive quite some applications with our technology. Here, skins from wood particle reinforced polypropylene are joined on the core. And then the complete panel is, since the skin is welded on the core, it's completely recyclable. So it can be re-grinded. And again, skin material can be made out of uh, the, the complete panel. And this is used, for example, as a luggage trim, luggage floor panel in the Maserati Ghibli and in the Jaguar F-Type. We have the licensee in Japan, which uh, provides also those parts for the Lexus and the Toyota plug-in hybrid Prius. And we have a new licensee in Mexico, Finotech, which also produces in the US or for the US market uh, those materials. Um, this shows a little bit more in detail, such a luggage floor panel. Uh, so it is combining the honeycomb structure with glass fiber polypropylene skins in this case and can then be shaped with a hinge to have an easy folding and it's this part is for example used in the Hyundai crater. And compared to the existing, the, the uh, still existing in some cars technology and uh, with also using a honeycomb core and sandwich but with paper honeycomb and polyurethane we can with our polypropylene honeycomb save weight and uh, have a much more environmental friendly product 
because the paper, when it is impregnated with polyurethane, cannot be recycled easy anymore. <clears throat> and we can uh, produce uh, directly in line with our core. So here's again the core production process, extrusion, vacuum forming, folding. And then we have here in the middle, a lamination of skins. So in this case, we laminate a cross-ply UD tape onto the core in a continuous process. And then we produce a sandwich panel, which can then be shaped and functionalized with injection molding equipment. So this is shown here. We have developed this together with the Fraunhofer Institute. This allows to have a complex shaped sandwich panel with minimum amount of material, where then compared to organo sheets, it's not uh, stiffened with ribs, but it is uh, stiff by itself because of two thermoplastic composite skins and the core in between, but can be functionalized at the corners and edges um, to have an easy connection and the finished part when it falls out of the mold. So there we are developing now with different tier one suppliers in Germany, uh, different products which realize this in cars. And this goes from underbody panels, luggage floor, door trim, uh, seat structures. So a lot of structures where today thermoplastic composites are already used. So we plan to use their, our honeycomb core and have them lower part, lower part costs as well, because the honeycomb core is lower in cost than uh, a composite uh, with, with fiber uh, structure and, and which needs to be much thicker than. And today we do this with polypropylene. So from granulate in a continuous process to a panel which is then shaped towards an automotive part. And in the near future, we will do this also from recycled thermoplastics, so recycled PET, recycled bottles, uh, bottle grade. We can start from flakes, which is very low cost raw material and process them, uh, produce a honeycomb core, which can be processed further into future cars. And this honeycomb core has an even lower CO2 footprint than our current material. Also with the current polypropylene core, we plan to have from next year on a CO2 neutral production in our factory. We have to buy then some certificates. This is less needed with this RPET based honeycomb core, which has a very low CO2 footprint on its own already. And can be completely recycled. Here are some examples of this RPET in some uh, prototype cars. This is from the University of Eindhoven. They make the complete uh, chassis, the complete structural part of the car out of natural fiber with uh, recycled PET-based honeycomb cores. We have also some developments uh, towards aerospace with high performance thermoplastics. So this is uh, based on fiber resistant uh, polycarbonate or based on polyetaemide which we can process towards honeycomb cores and add to them polyetaemide uh, glass fiber or carbon fiber skins. And this gives a very excellent fire smoke and toxicity results, even better than with the current Nomex and phenolic resin and has a very low CO2 free footprint and can be processed with the thermoplastic processing. Um, so this is the ongoing development where we will next year start a, a bigger production line for these honeycomb cores. And finally, I'd like to show you uh, new, the newest development, which we have just uh, patented and just started a project, uh, which is a hierarchical core material. So this core has in the sandwich, in the cell walls of the honeycomb, a sandwich structure. So this uh, allows them to make a honeycomb, which is very uh, compression resistant and shear resistant because Normally the cell wall buckles. If the cell wall itself is a honeycomb core, then you have uh, much better properties there. So this is for aerospace uh, structures considered. We have now a project with the University of Leuven, um, the Fraunhofer Institute started and we have received a Eureka label for this project. So the next years we will develop uh, their new well, this core material, first of all, production process for this core material and uh, applications. So this goes clearly towards aerospace applications with even higher performance than the current honeycomb cores. So in general, um, we stand for economic lightweight materials and we want to have 
honeycomb saving costs wherever they save already weight. And we do this with innovation, fairness, and persistence, and sustainability. And uh, well, in general, we achieve this with the inline production process, which is very cost efficient, with the excellent mechanical properties of the honeycomb core, and with uh, the thermoplastic material, which gives us then very resource efficient and uh, CO2 neutral products. So with this, thank you very much. Sorry. <clears throat> so thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, Thomas, we are a bit out of time, not too much, but... Um... <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. It's um, not an unexpected journey, actually, and I announced it. It's uh, We are in Israel. We are flexible. Perfect. And I already heard from Nir that his technical visit in his company will be fine, even if we have time for... Some question from the audience now to Mr. Pflug, to Jochen or to the other speakers, obviously. If there is no energy anymore from the audience side, obviously we do not force anyone to, to be active in this moment. But remember, you are free to contact these companies in the next days with much more time, as much as you need. Just schedule that with the uh, ladies from the German-Israeli chamber, Shula, Eva, and Bea. Just email them or write them directly here in the chat um, for the meetings, personal B2B meetings with these speakers if they are not already scheduled for you. Um, we have no problems of time. Maybe one or the other day is full already, but we are online, we are virtual, and we are pretty flexible in that. And I think I'm speaking for all our German companies in this way. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Um, all our 12 speakers, six of them, seven of them today. Thank you, Tiak, very much for your presentation, for the moderation. Thank you to our institutional speakers, Naum, Elma, and Werner. Thank you very much to my co-moderator, Shula, that will I will hand over to her the technical visit we will have right now. Um, thank you to the whole team that organized these two days of presentations um, and our partners, that is the, the WDMA, the AVK, the Composites United cluster, My Carbon, and even Leichtbau Baden-Württemberg BW, that is a regional cluster organization. We heard from Werner Loscheider about this different uh, levels of, of structure, national, nation, national wide and, uh, and regional, and obviously to our Israeli uh, associations. It was a very uh, interesting uh, presentations and two sessions yesterday and today. I learned a lot and I think you can even get much more um, insights together in the next days. And what I am really looking for is now what we have as a special finish of this, uh, this day, this presentation event, that is a technical visit. It's at least something of Israel when, that we can not really smell, but see and experience a little bit deeper than these small video screens from all of us. That is um, a technical visit at Masavit. Shula, please introduce uh, Nir. And Nir, I'm looking forward to your visit. Thank you. Yes, uh, so it's me again here. Um, Nir, I'm really excited uh, you showed it uh, to us. So uh, we are visiting Masavit now. Masavit is an Israeli company. They are specializing in 3D printing technology. Um, desktop version. No, not uh, exactly. Um, 
Neil is account manager for industrial solutions. Uh, the size of uh, the things they produce are not exactly what we think of when we thinking of uh, 3D print. And uh, we know of a machine that is standing in Germany, in uh, Nuremberg, or around it. And um, actually, we could do it in German now, but we have Israelis here and we want them uh, to enjoy the ride also. So, um, Neil, take over, please. So, uh, good morning. Uh, almost a uh, Malzeit in Deutschland. Uh, we werden das doch in, in English machen. Uh, uh, because of my uh, uh, lens, lens people uh, from, from Israel. So the people from Israel, you, uh, you are more than welcome uh, in a later stage also to visit us according to the rules. And uh, I normally going even at the company with a mask and, and you know that, so we have to keep the rules. Uh, and uh, for all of you out of Germany, thank you very much for the presentation. I enjoyed uh, those two days. I think I missed one or two, but I'm going to get a presentation. Um, my name is Nir. I, uh, uh, if you want to remember my name, I'm always near you. And when I say I'm always near you, uh, uh, you can see my shirt uh, uh, from Germany. I'm at least 12 times in a year in Germany, if not 20 times. Uh, very much connected uh, to the German industry. Uh, uh, didn't fly for 11 months uh, because of the lockdown, because of the quarantine that you have to come back, because of it's very difficult to visit you. And uh, But the purpose of this visit today is uh, to show you Massivit 3D. Uh, Massivit 3D is a, a company that was established in 2013. We are located in Israel just 10 minutes away from the airport. So if you land, and you want to have a, a sneak preview, uh, we will pick you up, make you a nice tour, and uh, then you can go to your original meetings. Uh, it oh, is I an amazing... I would yeah? suggest you go to speaker view, all of you, yeah? So that you can see it in, that you can see it in a big size. Sorry, Neil. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, let, let me start. It's really not a demonstration of all the technology, but the demonstration of the company and, and we go deeper also in the, into the technology. Uh, uh, we just came across the uh, VP sales and marketing. Uh, here we have, uh, this is my room. Uh, here I sit when I come to the, to the office. We, uh, if we can work from home, we work from home. The CEO is in a meeting at the moment, uh, VP R&D and VP uh, sales and marketing. Uh, on the right and left are the most important people, uh, the money people, uh, on the finance. Um, let me uh, uh, start to, to present. Uh, everything that we have here at the company is uh, either designed or, or printed by us, even this, uh, if I call it chandelier, the lamp. Uh, is a, is a, a printed in 3D. It's a, it is a small part. Uh, you will see the machine, we print bigger parts, uh, but we are printing also smaller parts. Uh, in a few minutes, you will also understand why and how we are connected uh, to the composite material world. Um, uh, some, uh, some concrete stuff that we have here and uh, uh, some uh, furniture. Uh, uh, we have uh, our chemistry uh, management that is sitting here and we have our labs and we have service and applications also that is uh, uh, located in, in this in the second floor. Normally in, in Israel, it is uh, very common that we eat together. Uh, okay, and this is, this is our kitchen. Uh, uh, due to the COVID, uh, we are limited on the amount of people that can be in the kitchen, so we are not serving lunch. We either purchase or bring from home. I can tell you that I eat every day what my kids are not eating the day before. And uh, this is what uh, I'm getting packed. Um, not to waste food, right? Uh, uh, this is a bull that uh, was printed by uh, Massive 3D. 
Uh, we can almost print th that size, but geometry is the king. And uh, this bull was printed in, in a few parts and combined together. Uh, we are going more and more into uh, technical applications. And, uh, and you will see uh, also our customers, not only those, those that are in Germany, that are all, also penetrating into the uh, technical applications because they are looking for uh, big printers. Um, every time I think that we have a, a big machine, I see someone that can uh, uh, create bigger parts. And uh, I saw, I think the presentation before, uh, the big pipes, it, it is amazing. Uh, so that big, we cannot print at the moment, but it will come one day. Uh, it might happen that uh, during my way down at the stairs, we will be disconnected. I promise to try and, uh, and uh, connect back uh, to you. Okay, so bear, bear with me. Yes, it works. For the moment, okay. it works and it's great. We can see you. For the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this also the shelter? No, no. Uh, no? We, we don't, uh, I don't think we have, we have yeah, we have shelter here, but uh, we have a garage. Uh, we are not at the garage. Now we are at the basement. Um, and uh, we will go into the uh, a, a ground floor. This is the ground floor. Uh, here we started in 2013. We have only that ground floor, and but with the time we extended and we come up to the second floor. We even rented additional uh, rooms and additional. Israel is a spoiled. You need parking places. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, what will they do with the car? Um, um, at the moment, we are, hey guys, bon appetit. Uh, we are, we are uh, duplicating uh, our kitchens uh, due to the COVID. We want uh, half of the people to eat here and half of the people to uh, eat upstairs because we start to bring the people back to work. Okay, this is uh, something that, uh, that we want to do. Due to the COVID, we had to stop a lot of, uh, of uh, development. And a lot of sales uh, stopped. Uh, people kept the money and said, maybe I will buy later. Not, not today, but tomorrow. Uh, what you see here is a mini uh, demo room that uh, we, uh, we just established. Uh, Massive it started with a visual communication. Okay, I don't know if you see it. It's a, it's a more than two meter high. Um, that's my hand. It's a more than two meter high. And, uh, and uh, slowly, slowly, uh, we, we saw customers uh, penetrating into technical parts. Uh, this is even a, a part of a, a, a moving vehicle uh, that is uh, even supported with a fiberglass. Um, or uh, for sure you can recognize uh, this part, but it is from a Japanese car. Hey, Moshe. Ah, so let's see the baby. Uh, of course, I'm here for, for questions if, if you have afterwards. Uh, uh, we have uh, one requirement if you need such a machine that your uh, entry to the building will be 2.80 meter 80 high. Otherwise, uh, the machine will not go in. It's a uh, more than 3 liter, but folded it's 2.80. meter 80. I will try to explain a little bit about the technology and uh, because it's a, it's a very unique uh, technology which allow us to be the fastest in the world in terms of uh, additive manufacturing. I feel like if, if uh, something is wrong in the voice or the picture is it? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, 
think it's difficult for us to see today. I didn't ask for any special requirement for, for demonstration today, just for the people, just for it, guys. Uh, so what we see here is the, is the, the machine. Uh, the, the mass of it is a table of 1.2 meter by 1.5 and can print objects that are up to 1 meter 80 height. Uh, this room where we are uh, located, this is our integration hall. We are getting the machine in, we test them, we pack and send them all over the world. At the moment, uh, and this one is going to be packed and going out. Uh, at the moment, there are more than 150 units worldwide. In Germany, I don't know why around Nuremberg, we have uh, three, we have in the north two more. And of course we have in France, in, in Belgium, uh, in Italy, actually all over the world. Not Madagascar, but, uh, but uh, truly all over the world. And so till now, everything is not really connected to composite material. And uh, I want to show you what is our connection to, to composite material. Uh, this is our future world. Uh, we see it as uh, our next potential. Uh, we are going to the R&D lab. Uh, the R&D labs, of course, we have jigs and the uh, half machine or uh, half baked machine or uh, a machine in development. Um, so this is a, a, a new machine. You, can, you cannot see it. It's, uh, this is our first machine that came out of the, the production line. Uh, the machine uh, is, is actually at the end is creating molds for the composite material. We are creating the mold and our customer will create the composite material. So how do we, maybe I will show first the mold, okay? Uh, this is a, 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 race, a race car seat uh, that uh, uh, was casted with epoxy. So we are using we are using epoxy in, uh, in order to create this mold. And this seat was created by our customer with the mold that was printed by Massivit 3D. Okay, uh, just to present it. Okay, so it is very important. This is a mold maker and the machine that can make the mold directly without the need of using any plug or master, just push the button and get your mold. How do we do it? Uh, I, I prepared something in advance. Uh, what you can see here is a shell. The, this white or yellow parts is a shell. We are printing the, a shell and into this shell, we are casting material. This is, is a casted material. Once we finish, to cast the, um, the casting material, here it's epoxy, we dip it into water. Those shells will fall apart and I will remain with the mold. I will remain with an epoxy mold. Okay, just uh, to connect it a little bit more to our world. Uh, of course, those are small parts for us. This is a, a seat of a bike. Uh, how did we print it? We printed the shell and we casted epoxy into the shell. Uh, this we dip into water for a few hours and the uh, shell will fall apart and I remain with, with the mold. This I can use immediately uh, to create a seat out of the carbon fiber out of composite material, okay? Uh, th this is our connection to, uh, to composite material. Uh, our target is to create uh, very big, uh, very big molds uh, that can be up to one meter 50 uh, in a height. And the dream is again to push the button and to get the mold and to create the part at the same week. This is a dream. 
today if someone wants to uh, to generate a part of a, out of a composite material, he would need weeks or months. Um, another example uh, that is coming from uh, aerospace a little bit uh, uh, is uh, this part is uh, from a drone, uh, and uh, the part uh, out of uh, fiberglass. Is, uh, is made by our customers. So we are printing, or our customers are printing, uh, again, the, the mold, and the end customer will create uh, the composite material part out of the mold. Uh, what, what can I, uh, uh, can I tell about uh, uh, Massivit more? Uh, Massivit is uh, located uh, in uh, all, all over the world. Uh, we have a Massivit uh, USA uh, because we found it uh, useful to do the distance and uh, our differences uh, to do that. We also establish, uh, establishing a, a Massivit Europe. We have our general uh, manager that is located in Belgium and uh, also have our demo center in Belgium. So. If you live in Aachen, it's, uh, it's less than two hours, not in the morning, but less than two hours. And, uh, but if uh, you live in the rest of the, of the Germany, it's also uh, on Katzensprung. Uh, sometimes it will be Katzensprung, maybe uh, to fly over to, to Tel Aviv, it will be faster if you're coming from Germany. And um, this is more or less, we are, we are 60 people. Uh, and um, and I think we will be back to 60 people uh, after the vaccine. Uh, the first airplane is landing this week here in Israel. We are not going to, to get the vaccine. The, I think uh, medical people are going to get it. And then I hope that within a few months, uh, we are all going to be free. I will be able to visit you. You will be able to visit us. And uh, we will be... We we'll try to generate business uh, in, a, in a faster way, in a more interesting way. Yeah, I'm here for questions. Which is much more fun. Which ah. is much more fun doing it face to face. Anyway, but still, it was great. I wanted to ask you before you disappear into into space uh, where we might not hear you. How do you want to go up ah. first? No, no, I'm, we are fine. Oh, here. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you. As I said, thanks a lot. Um, and it was so nice to see just what it looks like, really. Um, Yechiel yeah. has a question to you. He wanted to know if you cure the epoxy online similarly to the composite shell, or do you post cure, or is there any exotherm issues? It's a, it, it is a very good question. Uh, we call our technology cast in motion. We call our technology cast in motion. We are casting during our uh, uh, during the build of the shell, uh, and we cast it in a way that we control the isothermic. Uh, it is clear that we cannot cast everything at the, uh, at the same time. Uh, it will create an overheat. So we have all the equipment and all the measurements that needs. Uh, to cast when we talk about epoxy in uh, in, in the right way. Uh, Yechiel, you are more than welcome to to see a private demo tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, or if you come if you come across, if you if you go on the highway one next to the airport. Actually, my microphone is on mute because I'm here with the children, with the kids, so I don't want any background noise. But thank you very much, and thank you for the answer. I think you are not the only one in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> However, thank you, Nir. That was great. I already had the pleasure to to make this tour with you some week ago, and I was really looking forward to to give this pleasure to all of you. And actually, are there any other questions from our audience? Or is there a, yeah, Christian, Axel. Uh, who first? 
Ah, oh, Christina. Oh, yeah, there's still, still like Christina's left already. So my question is, um, how long are the printing times? Uh, are they uh, comparable? I mean, I guess for this such big uh, models you generate, uh, they should be substantial faster than, you know, conventional hobby printers. Well, how long does it take for maybe uh, example for the mold for this bike bike seat, for instance, which is rather small though? Okay, okay for, for, uh, it's a very good question. Um, if, if you are familiar with additive manufacturing with uh, 3D, uh, you know that in order to print, uh, for example, uh, this lady or this part of a car, uh, maybe you need a few days. Uh, you go home, you come back in the morning, you see that maybe 10 centimeters already. Uh, uh, not with us. Uh, we, have a, we are printing not like FDM or any liquid. We are using gel, uh, like a toothpaste. This gel we cure with the UV light. It means that once one line is touching the other line, it's getting cured immediately. It means also that I can print one line uh, next uh, on top of each other, but also one line next to each other. That means again, that all my objects are hollow. Okay, I do not need not need to fill the objects. They are all hollow. No, nothing in it. So if we talk about this technology, we talk about creating on Z axis about 35 centimeter in an hour. Okay, so this lady I can print uh, in maybe six hours, or maybe if the ball is, ball is standing too much aside, maybe it will be eight hours. But it's one day to, to print it. Now, when we go into uh, the Massive 10,000, what you saw, the connection to the composite material, uh, uh, there we have two processes. We have the process of the shell and the process of the casting material. Uh, in order to overcome uh, uh, the speed that we want to reach, the printing speed, we increase the accuracy. It's a step motors uh, that are uh, two or three times faster and uh, we can control the, uh, the casting, uh, amount of casting material and amount of casting thickness. Uh, actually, we, we do not need to create the entire mold. We are just creating the face that we need already connected to the tool that it should be. So uh, to be very specific, if we get a mold, we can calculate uh, the time but uh, if you, today, you know, if, if you want to create a mold for the car seat, for example, uh, you need a, a, a good a week, okay? A, a, or two weeks or three weeks if from, uh, from someone, because he needs to create the, uh, not only the, uh, the mold, but to create also the plug before or uh, the master, if you call it master. And, and we create directly, directly the mold, so the car seat is a matter of, uh, I would say, two hours. Okay, just uh, I, I print the car seat, maybe two hours. Then I'll dip it into water, another two hours, and then I need to to make some uh, fixation, uh, a process uh, at the oven. But basically, the next day I can create my my part, and th this is a dream. Oh, very well, very impressive. Thanks, thanks a lot for explaining. You're welcome. I, I also have another question. Thank you so much for your very interesting tour. This is amazing what, 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 what I could witness from here. It was very cool. Uh, oh, thank si you. Since you're using paste or gel and also UV light, it would mean that you can integrate functions very easily in, in those structures. Have you tested that already or are you using functionality already? Um, yeah, I, I would say we are not using at the moment the uh, uh, functionality parts, uh, but we know that our customers are, are adding some parts into their, into their production. Uh, also due to the fact that we are printing all objects, sometimes they, they close a certain uh, 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 bow wall, mm -hmm. uh, they, they close a certain area, uh, they put something in it and then they close it. Uh, mm -hmm. To say that it's uh, functional, uh, it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have one customer in Italy that is uh, 
actually creating a, a car, a car prototype mm -hmm. out of the machine, not composite material, uh, a, a car that is uh, uh, based on, on the design, uh, printing uh, with our material, which is a, a acrylic based, mm -hmm. and uh, cover it with a, a fiberglass. Okay, mm -hmm. this is all the uh, fiberglass uh, uh, coated. And ac actually, uh, this is uh, one model. There is one that is actually on the road uh, uh, for test uh, of, of, a, of a design. Later, later on, uh, they will create the, the car in the conventional way. I don't think that we, we are penetrating into the thousand uh, uh, parts, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, only single part. But it, it, is, it is a good question. Uh, I saw some customer doing something to say that it's functional. I don't want to mislead you. Okay, thank you. But, it, but it's, uh, you got the point. I, I'm, I have to say that I'm, I'm here for the next days and I'm not running away also tomorrow. Uh, I know that you are running away for Christmas. Uh, but we will be here also after Christmas if you have questions, if you want to talk to us, if you want to talk. Uh, I know that today we have a, a, a chat with a, a, a meeting organized. Uh, if uh, We are using uh, chemicals. We are using uh, components in our machines that are made in Germany. Uh, top, of the, uh, top of the class uh, 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 mechanisms. Uh, and uh, if you want to talk to us uh, this week is great if uh, if in a later stage also not a problem we are, we are here for you we'll be more than glad to talk to you i will communicate your contact details to the participants of course i promise and um yeah feel free to get in touch uh, it's very easy to talk to near it's uh, very interesting to and um, that's what I say, we should uh, use this opportunity just to get in touch easily, not to be too formal, to say this was interesting, I want to know more about it. Um, also for the Israelis, for the Israelis within the Israelis, I think um, that they got a wonderful example um, from the ministry and also from the association that show them how good it is if the companies are organized, if they know each other, if they know what they are doing, if they get into a network and uh, work together. I think uh, we should take advantage of uh, we should take of advantage of this in some form, and uh, I'm glad to say that uh, you came here to show it to us. Um, we are finished with the two days uh, from this part, from the presentational parts. We have B two B meetings um, coming on in the next days and uh, again thank you to all the Israelis that uh, took part uh, here and uh, as I said you're more than invited uh, to contact uh, me you got the invitation through us uh, our contact details are on our website also in the German Israeli Chamber of Industry and Commerce we are on LinkedIn we are on Facebook um, it's very easy to get to us as, uh, Thomas, would you like to wrap it up? Well, uh, I just wanted to say we won't run away to for, for Christmas before you go to Hanukkah, I think. However, um, the next yes. the next important date probably for everyone is a kind of lunch break. And um, therefore, I just wanted to say thank you again to everyone here. Ha Great, uh, have a great uh, B2B meetings in the next days.